kicking off. It leads the series. The Owls have won four of the last seven. However, in 86, they did have to forfeit one of those victories. And the game is underway from Pitt Stadium, kicking away from Israel and out of bounds near the 12-yard line. And already, Todd, you see the effects of having number 11 as the man at the goal line. Well, he's proven himself to be a very dangerous weapon, and Temple decided to try to kick away from him right away, but this time it came back and haunted him a little bit. New rule, Pitt will take the ball out on the 35-yard line. So the sophomore from Sarasota, Florida, McLaughlin will kick off once again, and the ball is brought out to the 35. The Panthers will have it. Alex Van Pelt off to a great start, showing the confidence, the maturity, working behind a veteran line, the junior from San Antonio, Texas, in his third year of running the helm. The wide receivers are asked and Boyer. Two tight ends in this first formation. Moore and Seaman are both in the lineup. That was Moore in the slot to the left and on first down. The pass is complete. And then bobbled, bouncing free. Is it a caught pass or not? They're ruling it a fumble. It went to Askew. He was hit immediately. The ball kicked loose. And the biggest player on the field, 6'8", James Harris, came up with the loose ball. So immediately a turnover. Well, that's exactly what we were talking about at the beginning of the show. Van Pelt is going to complete passes underneath, but if Temple could come up and jar the ball loose with hard tackling, they could do some things. Right there, there's the big hit. The ball comes loose, and James Harris falls on the loose football for a fumble. Big play right off the bat for the Temple defense. It will be Thompson, the quarterback. Shepard and Jenkins are both split wide to the right. The running backs are McNair and Swanson. And this is the tailback, McNair. He's got about four yards near the 41-yard line. There are the numbers for Thompson. He's thrown only one pass. Curtis Bray defensively, who alternates with Nelson Walker, both of those linebackers for Pitt hampered by injuries. They'll play about half the time. There's Trent Thompson, one of a whole flock of junior college transfers. Thompson coming. We have two wide receivers split to the right. McNair is the lone setback. Fullback is in the slot. McNair again. Close to a first down, maybe just a little bit short. It was a disappointing night last week for the Owls of Temple, and what has transpired to this team since that loss? That's the question we had for head coach Jerry Byrne. Well, first thing that happened is our seniors got together in the locker room, with particularly Swift Birch, and basically stated that this is uh, one game, uh, the season behind, this game is behind us, the whole season is ahead of us. Uh, let's get back to basics, and that's what we've done as a coaching staff. Short yardage, two tight ends. They go to the I formation, and before the ball is snapped, we have a flag. change the play call as it moves them back five yards. Pitt completing a pass on the first play of the ball game, but then a hard hit. And the fumble follows. So it becomes instead of third and five, third and six. The ball is just outside the 40-yard line. I'm sure Jerry Burnt is disappointed with that penalty because with his young new quarterback, third and one is a lot easier than a third and six or seven conversion. And it changes the formation. Two wide receivers are split to the right. McNair and Swanson are split. It's a passing formation. A pump fake by Thompson. He'll try to run. Being pushed outside. Finally gets the pass away complete for a first down. Inside the 25, down inside the 20-yard line. Sam Jenkins, who was a tailback last week, had to be moved out to the wide receiver spot. Finally brought down by Tom Bart. Bart applying the pressure, but Bart could not, McDonald applying the pressure, but could not get there. Nice job by Thompson keeping his composure. He eluded Ricardo McDonald, which is not an easy thing to do. And good thing Sam Jenkins did there. He kept coming back to the football. That ball wasn't exceptionally well thrown, but Jenkins kept coming back to the football. Big third down play. Puts the Owls in business at the 19-yard line. McNair's the tailback. Swanson in front of him, the fullback. It's McNair moving outside. 15. Slides down near the 10-yard line. A gain of about nine. Tinner, the right tackle, leading the way with a good block. And let's set up the Owls' offensive unit for you for this afternoon. 
a unit that has been changed somewhat because of injuries. Here are the linemen, Johnson, Kulikowski, McCabe, Irwin, and Tinner, who did the blocking to lead that last play. Thompson, Swanson, McNair, Shepard, Jenkins, Garvin, the mix among the backs. Second down and one. Swanson is the setback as they have moved McNair into the slot. Swanson has the first down near the eight-yard line. Defensively for the University of Pittsburgh. Hamilton, Bart, and Kelly along that line. McDonald, Williams, Tumulty, an outstanding freshman who, like McDonald, started his very first game ever at Pitt. Bray, who will alternate a lot with Nelson Walker, and Coleman, Israel, Whaley, Perkins in the secondary. First down and goal from the eight-yard line. Some early problems now for Paul Hackett and the Panthers. Out of the eye formation. McNair down at the six-yard line. Doug Whaley, number 24, sliced him down. Doug Whaley the tackle. It'll be second down and goal. The ball near the six-yard line. McNair has rushed for 20 yards so far in the first quarter. We have 11 minutes and 15 seconds remaining. Again, it's McNair. Keeps his balance inside the five near the four. Charles Williams, the linebacker, the first to greet him. I think part of what Temple was doing is conservative to protect the new quarterback, but another part of it is that this is the kind of offensive football that Temple wants to play. Jerry Burnt wants to be a power-running football team. He's counting a lot on the combination of McNair and Leon Brown at tailback. They had big years last year. They're trying to get them out of the gate good here against Pittsburgh. With the ball is Swanson. No place to go as he is wrestled down. Again, it's Doug Whaley firing up from his strong safety spot to make the play. It'll be fourth down and a kicking situation. The way Temple's been coming out trying to run, Whaley has been lining up on the line of scrimmage quite a bit. Here's Swanson who scored three touchdowns against Pitt last year, gets to the corner and there's nowhere to go. He doesn't have the speed as a fullback to reverse his field like that. Whaley, nice play, keeping that play to his inside. Well, in addition to punting and quarterbacking, Trent Thompson is also the holder, and he will hold for Mike Knuth, who had the kick of 19 yards last week, accounting for the only Temple points, trying to take the early lead, and it is wide to the left. The angle tougher. The is it, it forces guys to do a lot more on their own, not just academically, but also uh, with football, guys are taking videotapes home on their own, especially quarterbacks and skilled position players. From the 20, second possession for the Panthers. The backs were split behind Van Pelt, and his throw intended for the fullback, Glenn DeVoe, is incomplete. Paul Hackett talking about his team and this game. He had these things to say about the fact that there's no problem in Pitt getting ready to play Temple. It's a big game just because it's part of the conference. Uh, but I think most of all, uh, the remembrance of last year. I think uh, Temple was able to come in here and, and handle us. Uh, it was a very difficult loss for us. Uh, it was something that, uh, that we've had to live with for the whole year. And I think this team is very focused uh, for that reason. Williams out of the backfield. Across the 30, Glasper ran him out. Should be enough for the first down. Nelson had a shot at him and missed him, but that is the first first down for the Panthers. And for Pitt offensively, Jeff Christie, Gorajewski, Sestili, DeLazio, and Miller, a crew that's been together for a while. They're comfortable. However, Christie is the one who's been moved all over the place. Van Pelt, backed up by DeVoe and Williams, the running backs, Green, Boyer, and uh, some security and veteran leadership at tight end. Seaman, we'll see a lot of Dave Moore. As a matter of fact, Dave is on the field right now. Williams has the football. He's outside the 35 near the 36-yard line. Gary Downing made the tackle. And defensively for the Owls of Temple. Some feel a better defensive unit than Pitt faced last week at Southern Miss. Fenwick, Taylor, and Birch. Angeli Stevens, Carey, and Harris. Harris, who's 6'8", and he can also play a down lineman. Glass 
Kupfer, Bruce, Nelson, and Dent. Schmidt's not starting, neither is Ellis. Three tight ends in this formation for Pitt. And off comes again to Williams. Slips down as he crosses the 40. Near the 41-yard line and maybe just a hair short of the first. We'll check the spot of the football and see if they're going to have to measure. Very close to the first down. 8-41 remaining. Scoreless game so far at Pitt Stadium. Pitt has run the ball just well enough this year to keep them dangerous in their passing game. Jermaine Williams does a nice job stretching this play out, waiting for his blockers to develop, loses his footing a little bit, trying to cut back upfield. But so far, on this little run play, they're just stretching the defense out and letting Williams kind of pick and choose where he wants to try to cut it back in. As you can see, he is a couple of inches short. Had he been able to maintain his balance on the cutback, he would have had the first down with ease. Pitt will look at a third and short ball just outside the 41 yard line the Panthers offense much like that of the 49ers or maybe Dallas design Todd as you have mentioned to, to do it in short spurts they don't really turn it upfield deep that often no they're a high percentage pass team and they they throw short on first and second down and what happens you see they're they're converting a high percentage of third downs but a majority of those are less than three yards for conversions three tight ends DeBoe is the lone setback. Seaman Moore and Smackos are all in there to block on third and a couple of inches. They're looking for its second first down. No problem for DeBoe. He's across the 45, close to the 47. Eric Seaman, the tight end, led the way with the blocking. Held two tight ends, a very balanced front, and they just outflanked the Temple defense. Scott Miller and Tony DeLazy on that right side of the line just crashed everything down. A lot of running room out there for DeVoe. Very close to the 47-yard line. First and 10 for Pitt on the move. The Owls got the turnover, an early field goal opportunity, but a miss, and the game is scoreless. short side of the field and dropped for a loss is Williams. They had the three wide receivers all spread to the far side of the field, came back to the short side, and there was nothing there. Now, Greg Angeli is very strong against running plays to the tight end side. That time he just held his ground. Pitt was trying to run a little counter trap play back at him. He stopped him for a loss. A loss of two. It's back at the 45. Second down and 12. Another change for Alex Van Pelt, when he gets in these situations, he doesn't worry about getting all 12 yards on one play. Right, he's mature. That, that's what that is. That's a sign of maturity. He knows I can dump it off to the back, get five. Dump it to the tight end, get six. Don't have to get it all back at once. And Williams is going to get about five or six after it looked like he was stopped in the backfield. Swift Birch had a shot at him, but came up with air. Jermaine Williams is doing a nice job running the football. This young back from Detroit, Michigan, keeps his balance. Birch had him. He's got to wrap him up. Jermaine Williams does a nice job not giving up on the play. Third down. About four. Ball is just inside the 50. Some pressure this time. And because of the pressure, the pass for DeVoe is incomplete. Gary Downing was in Van Pelt's face that time. Even though that was not a sack, that's a victory for the Temple defense. They were able to sneak a guy through there, and the pit was, offensive line was not able to pick him up. And Van Pelt, he's not going to take the sack. He sees it coming. He's going to get rid of the football, but that's a hurry. And that, that results in a punting situation for Pittsburgh. Jim Royal is the long snapper. Kevin Leon, who is averaging... Over 41 yards a kick will be punting to Leslie Shepard. Shepard standing back at his own 10-yard line. So at midfield, the Temple defense is held. The game is still scoreless. The kick off the side of the foot and wiggles out of bounds. That last year, but they don't get back there for two more weeks. From the 32, it is first down and 10. They keep the ball on the ground. McNair, a couple. And he was snowed under. It was a surprise here at Pitt when they made the change to Thompson, but not a surprise to Jerry Burke, and we asked him about the switch in signal callers. 
first of all, we owe it to all of our players in any position that if one have, one player happens to be playing better than the other player, that that player deserves a chance to start. Our quarterback position between Trent Thompson and Anthony Richardson has been very close since last spring. In fact, Trent had the best spring of the two players. Cabrera is now the fullback. You'll see him shift as they move out of the eye. The backs are split. Thompson's going out to the right, and it's picked off. The interception for the Panthers. Doug Whaley grabs it. He had that one timed beautifully, Todd. He certainly did. You know, when you have a young quarterback or a new quarterback, I shouldn't say he's young, you want to try to give him some confidence, throw some short passes. Jerry Burns said they were going to try to do this for him. But this pass, he threw it inside, gave the defender a clean break on the football. If you're going to throw that quick pass like that, you've got to throw it more to the outside. Either your man can catch it or nobody can catch it. Doug Whaley stepped in front of it, timed it perfectly, as you said, John. The sophomore from Pittsburgh stepping in front of Jenkins to make that interception. Sets the Panthers up at their best field position of the first quarter. 5.51 remaining. The ball is at the 36-yard line. Askew and Boyer are both split to the right. Here comes the Williams. Bang down as he moves inside the 30 to the 29. Popping the pads was Aaron Denton. Denton starting this afternoon in front of Tony Smith, who had the two interceptions last year against Pitt, and Mark Ellis with a bit of an ankle problem, also not starting at the rover position, and Daryl Nelson getting the call there. Things are happening uh, just the way they've been happening for Pitt and just the way Jerry Byrne didn't want him for Temple. Temple turned the ball over two of their first three possessions last week against Alabama. Now another turnover. Meanwhile, Pitt has been doing this for the first three ball games. They've been very opportunistic. Three wide receivers left and coming back again on that counter trap down to the 26-yard line and maybe just short of a first down is Williams. Swift Birch made the tackle with some help from Kevin Carey. What a freshman year Alex Van Pelt has. And keep in mind, this is only game number three of his junior season. He's got this year, and Todd, he's got one more to go, and he's already climbing a very impressive ladder. He certainly is. He's, he's getting better each year, and that's what uh, Coach Paul Hackett expected him to do. Uh, he's on his way to a great year this year, and he's in some very good company right there. And Alex, stick his nose in there and check out this measurement as Pitt is looking for a first down. Taking over on the interception at the 36-yard line of Temple and trying to drive it toward the end zone. Still scoreless. Four minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the first quarter. You know, back to that interception a couple plays ago, one thing that may have had an effect in there is that Sam Jenkins was the intended receiver. Jenkins just made the switch from tailback to wide receiver this week. He's still trying to get comfortable with playing that position. He was a great receiver coming out of the backfield, but it's a little bit different when you line up in a wide position and have to run precision-type routes. And again, the Panthers just short of the first down, so it will be third and very short yardage. Last time they were in this formation, they ran for about five, and they used three tight ends. Eric Seaman, Dave Moore, and Mike Smackos to do some blocking. See how they set it up this time. They have two tight ends. Pitt will confuse you. They'll get in, a, in what looks like a run set and throw the football and vice versa. And they do have the bow as the lone setback. Moore in the slot is a tight end. There are three of them in. He leads the blocking. The hit comes as he crosses the 25 to the 24. Alfonso Taylor made the hit on him, but it is a first down for Pitt. Ball will be spotted at the 24. Pitt just coming off the football extremely hard right now. They've got a pretty balanced front up there with the two deep, uh, two tight ends. And I think that Van Pelt is going to the line of scrimmage and calling the play to, to away from the strength of the Temple defense. And they're coming off the ball, that offensive line for Pitt extremely well. And from three tight ends, we go to three wideouts. Still DeVoe is the lone setback, and he's got the ball. Pitt as he bounces across the line of scrimmage, picked up one, maybe two. James Harris was the first to get an arm on him. Then he got some help. What can you key on in terms of trying to figure out what the Panthers are going to do on first down? Because they do mix it, as you said, very well. I think you have to come into the game expecting them to do it about 50% of the time. Run 50%, pass 50%. Like I said, they use so many different formations, and they have personnel groupings. They, they have players that are assigned to certain formations. They're a pretty difficult team to read. Their offense is very complex. DeVoe remains the lone setback. He's carried three times for 11 yards in the early going. This time, great fake. 
pumping and moving down, diving across the 15 to the 14 was Van Pelt. Looked like a beautiful play, but there was pretty good reaction in the secondary. The secondary covered up pretty well, but the linebackers were totally fooled by Van Pelt. This is one thing he does literally as well as anybody in the country. Watch his eyes. He still looks back into the play. You don't see the football. Van Pelt is not noted as a runner, but he'll run when he knows that he can get close to that first down. You saw Dave Moore out in front trying to block on Angeli. Temple defense was very well coached on that play as far as staying with their men, not getting sucked in with that bootleg fake. And Jelly did a nice job staying with Dave Moore, the tight end. Van Pelt, like I said, not a noted runner, but he'll run for seven, eight yards if he has to. And finally, Pitt gets a measurement to go their way. The Panthers on the third measurement of the first quarter. This time, get the first down. The ball is at the 14-yard line. First down and 10. Pitt started this drive at the 36th of Temple following a turnover. Doug Whaley with an interception. Pitt has turned it over once as well, and neither team has scored. The Owls had the best chance, and they moved it down deep into Pitt territory. They got it down to the four-yard line, wound up missing a field goal. DeBoe remains the lone setback. Three wideouts all split to the left side. Dave Moore, the tight end, is to the right. He'll lead the blocking. DeVos spins his way down to the 11-yard line. Angeli again making the tackle. 6'3", a 247-pound senior. Angeli on that side. James Harris is a load on the other side. He is 6'8", 267 pounds. They're expecting big things from him on the defense. He's one of the tri-captains. He was a second-leading tackler in 1990, and this is his third year as a starter. He's got a lot of experience at that position. Now Pitt goes to two tight ends and two wide receivers. Moncrief and Askew are both split to the left side. Williams becomes the setback. Moore, the, there's the motion man. Williams spins, but he'll get nothing as he is wrapped up quickly. Kevin Gary plugs the gap in the middle, and down goes Williams. It'll be third down and still about eight from the 12. Williams tried to make a cut back there. He spin, but Gary just in good position, got that hand on the jersey. Wasn't going to let him back. Hold on to him long enough for the rest of his teammates to get there to make the tackle. Alfonso Taylor leaves the lineup for Temple. You talk about size. Alfonso, 6'4", 340 pounds. This is the eighth play of the drive. Williams is the tailback. Moore and Seaman, the tight ends are split to the right. The wide receivers are split to the left. That's the formation. Van Pelt drops it off to the tight end at the five. Forcing his way forward is Seaman near the three-yard line. Eric Seaman, a very short route, but that's what Pitt loves to do. The pressure came from Kyle Clasper. They brought a corner blitz right there. Van Pelt read the blitz. Stung it, stood in there long enough to get it to his tight end, Dave Seaman. I'll tell you. Van Pelt is really good at that. He will stay in that pocket as long as he has to to get rid of the football. Seaman read the blitz. A lot of times it's up to the quarterback and the hot receiver to be on the same page. Seaman was on the same page as his quarterback that time. Alfonso Taylor checks back into the lineup. The bow. And Lance Markle, the running back. The bow. Tries the right side. Touchdown, Pitt. DeVoe takes it into the end zone, and the Panthers break the ice, scoring first. A 36-yard march, the key, the turnover, the interception, has put the Panthers in business. Glenn DeVoe is the most durable back on the pit football team. He's most versatile. They love him because he knows all of their pass protections and, and understands everything they're trying to do offensively. He does a nice job stretching that play out. He's, he's run the ball well in the first couple of series for the Panthers. Kaplan, who missed the first extra points in his career last week, had a couple blocked. The coaches said that's not going to happen again this week. And it does special teams. Todd mentioned one of the keys. They had to perform well, get some good field position. Jenkins will not run it out. Taking it in the end zone down to fair, and the ball will be spotted at the 20. It'll be the third possession of the opening quarter for Temple. They started at the pit 45 following a fumble recovery. 
Then they started at their own 33 and wound up turning the ball over themselves. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. The offside is against Pitt and will do it again. There's one other area that the Panthers have been much better in, especially on offense. They've not been hurting themselves with penalties. I think they've only had two offensive penalties in the first two games, and it's something that they've done a lot of work on and took some special precautions to improve in that area this year. So the kickoff will come again. Jenkins doing a good job on returns. He's averaging almost 30 per return. Silvestri will try it again. Same trio, Brown, Jenkins, and Shepard deep. And it comes to Jenkins' side of the field. At the goal line, he will run it out. The 5, the 10, the 15, at the 20. Starts right and is hit and straightened up as he gets to the 25-yard line. So a 25-yard return, a little less than what he had been averaging. He's dropped on the special teams by Sean Abenay. In team offense, you see what a great start offensively. But I guess no surprise when you look at the Hurricanes of Miami, Todd, uh, they can put some numbers, points, and offense on the board. They certainly can. They're just an exciting team to watch. And, and really, you see 506 yards of offense, but the real strength of the Hurricane team is that defense. Brown is now the setback, and Cabrera is the fullback. And Brown high steps his way across the 25, out near the 28-yard line on a first down play. Jeff Esters made the tackle. Esters sharing some time with Tom Bart, the nose tackle. Here's an early score. Georgia Tech leading Boston College, and some illness has forced the Eagles coach upstairs for this ball game. Yeah, I guess he's coaching it from the press box. Didn't want to miss the game, and is there uh, doing his part from the sidelines. Been out with the flu all week. Deflected and in intercepted. Whaley gets his second, second interception of the game. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage by Hamilton, and then it was up for grabs, so Whaley picks off his second. Brent Thompson is only a six-foot quarterback. He's not very tall. He takes a short drop. He's still so close to the line of scrimmage. Hamilton gets his hands up. That ball's up for grabs at that point. Keith Hamilton really turned up the heat last week rushing the passer. He had two sacks. He had a deflection. He's a big kid in there at defensive end. Well, he has had to step forward a bit on that defensive side of the line because of the fact that Sean Gilbert, who has All-American potential himself, has been bothered a bit by turf toe. So Hamilton has really stepped forward. Inside the 30, it's first down, 10 for the Panthers. On first down, Matt Pelt dumps it off. DeVoe makes the catch, and he is knifed down at the 28-yard line by Daryl Nelson. Nelson reacting quickly, coming up to make the hit. Very short game for the Panthers. That's the pit philosophy, though, John. They're going to throw to that back. And he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation out there with the linebacker. That time, Nelson made a nice play, made the tackle. But if he eludes that one, it's a 10-yard gain instead of a, a zero or one-yard gain. So that's exactly the kind of offense they wanted to run. You have to credit the defense, and Nelson made the good tackle. Good open field tackle. They're going to let the clock wind down. We're inside the final five seconds of the opening quarter. At the 29-yard line, it has started at its own 35, its own 20, but the last two at the Temple 36 and at the Temple 29. Williams and Markle are the running backs. Markle the deepest in the eye formation. Montreal and Davis split left, and the quick pass comes out to Montreal. 25 and tripped up. He stretches it out down to about the 22. Keita Crespina made the hit. Bring up third down on a couple for the Panthers. Trying to punch it in, and I think defensively, this could be a critical moment in the game for Temple already. It's a very important series right now. They've, they've given up one touchdown off of a turnover. They're in that exact same situation. They've got to hope at the worst that they only give up a field goal. 
Pitt had the statistical edge in the first half, picking up a couple of turnovers and leading seven to nothing. We're just underway in the second quarter. Green and Davis are the wide receivers. Williams is the setback. And Pelt has company, drops it off, and it's incomplete. There was nobody out there but the center, Chris Sestelli. The pressure came from Daryl Nelson that time, so they did put some pressure on Van Pelt, and successfully. They brought a blitz that time with Nelson, the strong safety blitz, and they ran right into that bootleg fake. There are the stats from the first quarter. Total yardage edge, each team with just one penalty, but the difference, turnover, and Pitt had the ball a couple more minutes than the Owls. The field goal unit is on. It will be a 39-yard field goal attempt. And Scott Kaplan, who is three of four, his long is 47 this year. Kaplan's got the kick up and on its way and through. Shepard and Jenkins, the others. Vestry with the kickoff. Strong left-footed kicker. To be taken by Jenkins about three yards back in the end zone, and he will not run it out. So the Owls will start from their own 20. You know, both the interceptions, Todd, have been on the same as Terry mentioned, the same kind of passing plays, timing type plays. And Right, they've just been little short drops, three-step drops. The problem is he's, he's not been able to get back off the line of scrimmage far enough to get a good throwing angle. A minute and 36 seconds it took to put three more on the board. Kaplan's 39-yard field goal. Temple starting from its own 20-yard line. The Owls really need to get a consistent drive going on this possession. Davini is in there tight end along with Garvin. The setback is Swanson. Swanson gets the call across the 20. Stays on his feet close to a first down. Very close to a 10-yard pickup. Davini and Krulikowski leading the way with the blocking on the left side. That play right there is the same philosophy as the pit offense. They line up in two tight ends, one back. The quarterback makes the call which way the defense is softest. Nice job by Kulikowski just staying with his block. Swanson bounces it outside, picks up seven, eight yards. Actually picked up very close to nine. Only one step away from a first down. Cabrera now becomes the setback on second and one. Brown is in the slot to the right. Cabrera hit immediately, but still powers his way outside the 30 for the first down. Keith Hamilton made the tackle. This is Temple's first Big East game. Pitt has played one against West Virginia, but Jerry Burnt and the Owls very excited about a chance to play football in the Big East Conference. Well, our players are already excited about the fact that this is the first ever conference football game for Temple University. The first game that we have a chance to play a Big East Conference opponent. We're absolutely delighted with being in this conference. We're just ecstatic about having an opportunity to play uh, one of our opponents uh, in the Big East Conference. Uh, our players are really looking forward to it. Play action down the middle and long intended for Leslie Shepard, but he had Steve Israel, who can run with about anybody, and Tinker Harris in the vicinity chasing. They haven't thrown the ball downfield at all today. They, they wanted to go play action. They picked up a first down. They've been running the ball pretty effectively, but they've got to get a big play, and the only way to do that really is through the passing game. That is the first time that they have attempted a pass on first down this afternoon. They went long down the middle. They have run it six times on first down, and that is the first passing chance. 13-01 remaining to be played here in the first half. Thompson just one of four. He was one of two in his major college career coming in. This is Brown. The ball pops loose, and let's see if the Panthers have it. It looks like Keith Hamilton is on top of the ball, and Pitt gets another turnover at the Temple 30-yard line. So right now, the Pitt defense is really setting the table for the Pitt offense. They really are. They, they've been doing this, and they're building confidence in the way they're playing. Pretty good developing play, but right there, the ball is stripped out by Ricardo McDonald, Mr. Steady for the Pitt defense. Three turnovers already in the first half. They've been doing it all season, and, and that stuff kind of snowballs, John. When you start doing that and creating turnovers and making big plays on defense, you expect to do it week in and week out. And that is a change for a pit defense that was handled by almost everybody last year. They simply did not get anything going defensively. There's Fred Von Appen, the 
the defensive coordinator, and he told us in a meeting Thursday, he says, you know, we're not a great defense. We're not an overpowering type of defense, but our kids are playing hard. They're learning to run to the football, and they know that if they hustle and hit, good things are going to happen. And for the first three ball games, that has definitely been the case. Three tight ends in this formation for the Panthers. Williams is the lone setback. Williams has the ball. A little stutter step, and then he moves it forward to the 25. A gain of about four. Swift Birch. And Greg Angeli makes the tackle. It'll be second down. The ball is spotted at the 26. So it's giving three on the play. Second down and about seven yards to go. Askew and Boyer are the wideouts. Seaman and Moore the tight ends. It continues to juggle personnel with almost every down. Williams, the lone setback behind Alex Van Pelt. The ball at the 26-yard line. Pitt taking over at the 29, following the fumble recovery. Here's Williams, 25. Inside the 20, he's hit and pushed to the 18 by Birch. Great play right there by Alex Van Pelt. I think it was an audible. Temple lined up in a bear defense, the way the Chicago Bears used to play with eight men on the line of scrimmage. They're bringing James Harris. All that play is is just try to get it over his head, get it to the running back out there with no defender right on him. That's easier said than done because he is six feet eight inches tall as Mr. Harris. Williams made the catch. Van Pelt is now six out of nine. Both wide receivers, Askew and Moncrief, split to the right side. Williams remains to set back. Motion man is Moncrief. Here's Williams. Sets up the blocking on the left side and works his way down to the 10. Jeff Christie, the left tackle, leading the blocking. You also saw downfield Dave Moore leading the way for Pitt. See, Pitt just is doing such a good job of mixing the run and the pass on first down. They throw it last time, they come back with Jermaine Williams here. Nice job blocking downfield by the Pitt wide receiver out there. And Santos Stevens was the first on the scene for Temple. The gain is eight. The ball is at the 10. Second down. Another youngster from Alderdice High School in Pittsburgh, Curtis Martin, is now in the backfield. Van Pelt fires, and he hits it for the touchdown. That's Boyer. He had two touchdowns last week. He gets one this afternoon in front of Aaron Denton. Chris Boyer just ran a slant pattern, had his defender beat to the inside. Van Pelt put the money right where he needed to put it. Watch this right from the end zone. Quick slant, three-step drop, low into the inside. Boyer cuts off this defender for the touchdown. It's a timing pass. And you can bet that the coaches will be ecstatic about getting those young receivers involved in this offense. They've worked hard at going to the backs and the tight ends to give the youngsters some time to develop. Extra point attempt by Kaplan is up. Drives, you're only looking at 30 and 40-yard drives. Deep to Jenkins, and again, he will not bring it out. Good job of placement of the kickoffs being done by Silvestri here this afternoon. Not giving Jenkins, who's pretty speedy, a chance to run it back. So give some credit to the guy who does the kicking off, and he'll get a congratulations as he goes to the bench. So at the 20-yard line once again, the Owls will take over. Desperately needing here in the first half to organize something offensively, put something together give their defense a little time to catch their breath on a hot, muggy day at Pitt Stadium. Shepard and Jenkins, the wide receivers. The play action fake to Swanson. Dump it off to the tight end, Davini. Davini out across the 30 near the 33-yard line. Got a first down. Davini not able to play last week because of hamstring problems, but it's good for the Owls offensively to have him back in there. There you can see Temple with that early opportunity. They missed the field goal, then the two interceptions and the fumble. That has been big time trouble for the Owls. Temple coaching staff is real high on this Georgia Benny. They were hoping to get him in for about 25 to 30 plays days, not fully recovered, but they think he can be one of the premier tight ends in the East when he's healthy. McNair is the deepest in the backfield. He'll get the pitch. Swanson with a block. McNair trying to split the defenders at the 35-yard line. Does that to about the 36. Williams the first on the scene for Pitt. 
Charles Williams, a sophomore who is greeting probably some guys he played against before. He's from Philadelphia. Temple just trying to stretch that play out right there. Good block by Swanson on Whaley. Opens a nice path for McNair to follow through on there. They closed it down pretty quickly, and the gain is only three. So it'll be second down and seven. Ten minutes exactly remaining in the first half. McNair and Swanson still the deep man. Thompson steps back and then gets back to the 35-yard line. Curtis Gray applied the pressure to him. We talked about at the top of the show. Don't be surprised to see Pitt do some different things. Come after this young quarterback. There they go. They're rushing five guys. Hamilton with a good rush beats his man, forces Thompson back up right into the waiting arms of Charles Williams, the linebacker. It's a gain of just it's a loss of the yards back to the 35. So he dropped one on that play. Third down and eight now. Washington has come in as a wide receiver, a three wide receiver formation and some confusion on the part of Trent Thompson. He will take the timeout. And as Todd can tell you, quarterback's best friend on occasion, right? Without question. Of course, Bill Myers says this group may not be as big as some we've had in the past, but I like it. Third down, eight at the 35-yard line. Movement everywhere, and let's see which way the call goes. It appeared to me that maybe Temple jumped first, and we'll see. It's going to go against Temple, I believe, because Pitt has the opportunity to get back on sides, even if they jump. Dead ball, illegal procedure, false start, against the offense, five-yard penalty. And that is the second rather costly penalty because they've come on third down. Sets them back, makes it third and long. Then we showed you what Temple has done with its possession. You talk about great field position. Pitt, one play, the fumble after the completed pass. Then they punted, but then they really got in business, getting the football three straight times, deep in Temple territory, and getting points out of each of those drives. Here comes Thompson, gets away from one tackle, spins away and dives to the 40-yard line. The ball pops loose, but he is down. A tandem of Williams and Harris defensively for Pitt after Thompson did a pretty good job of dancing away from some trouble. Thompson's going straight back this time. He takes a little deeper drop, but he still has no one to throw to. Right there, he makes a decision that he's going to run. He got away from McDonald. He was finally brought down, but brought down about three yards shy of the first down. So with eight minutes and... 30 seconds remaining in the half. There's the first punt for Thompson. And you see he's changed his shoes. Yes, he has to do that. They have to run that out on the field. They practiced it all week. Brent Thompson. Boy, he can boom him over the head of Israel and skidding into the Panther end zone. So the leading punter in the nation drills one at 60 yards. Maybe a chance for some field position. There is the play selection on first down. It has mixed it a bit more than Temple. And Pelt with a fake, then the throw, and he's got the tight end across the 35. Eric Seaman out across the 30, rather, to about the 32-yard line. Tony Schmitz made the tackle. Well, that'll balance that statistic up a little bit more. First down pass out to his big tight end. They, they just... These tight ends are experienced. They tried to build their offense around their experience, and that was tight end and the fullback DeVoe. Right here, Van Pelt, right in the scene, the soft part of the defense. Seaman reads it well, gets in there for the nice catch. And the Panthers were expecting to see a lot of that Temple zone this afternoon. They are. Seaman's second catch, a total of 32 yards for him. To about the 35 is Curtis Martin. The tailback, James Harris, the tallest player on the field. You can see him there, number 86. All six, eight of him from East St. Louis, Illinois, made the tackle. Gain up a couple on the play, and that's it. Second down. Seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Pitt is out in front, 17 to nothing. All 17 points are set up by turnovers by Temple. Bo is the setback. 
And two tight ends and two wide receivers as Van Pelt drops straight back, rolls a bit, pumps, throws high to the tight end. Dave Moore. Alex, that time, just kind of ran out of real estate over there. Well, he threw the ball away. I think they were trying to set up a screen to the right side, and he saw right away that the play was just not going to have a chance. Tried to make something happen, roll into the sideline, then decide to get rid of the football. Another sign of maturity. You're not going to complete every pass. Right here, I think they were trying to set up a screen, and here he sees this play isn't going to work. I'll just get rid of it, come back, let's play the next down. Derek Dietrich Gels has checked in for Pitt. It is three of five on third down. This is third and about eight. DeVoe is the lone setback. Van Pelt will look left. Throws, and it is overthrown, intended for Eric Seaman. You see how much he likes to throw to his tight ends and to his running back. He has a lot of confidence with those guys. They have the experience. They've played in a lot of ball games. He knows what kind of routes they run, what kind of body signals they give moving down the field. And he's going to throw those guys. Until he gets more comfortable with his young wide receivers, he's going to go to his tight ends more than, more than anyone else. Kevin Leon will kick to Leslie Shepard. And remember, Leon's last kick went off the side of his foot and out of bounds after only 17 yards. Inside the seven-minute mark, time remaining here in the second quarter. It's been all pit so far. And flags down. There was movement on the left side for Temple, but then I think there was a reactive movement by Pitt as well. Let the officials sort it out. Dead ball. Ball start against the offense. Repeat, third down. So the penalty goes against the Panthers. Moves them back five. It's the third penalty against Pitt. At what, seven coming in for the season? Worked hard on that ever since spring ball. Making sure the players understand what causes the penalty. They really cut them down. Oh, five yards deeper. The kick is away. This one is much better. Shepard driven back inside the 25. Spins away from one. Now two. A flag is down. And so is Shepard at the 23-yard line. A 47-yard kick. And Richardson were very close all the way through the fall, and this was his quarterback in the decision that he made. Play action fake. The pass is caught by Deveni, the tight end. He is banged down at the 20 yard line. Doug Whaley up in that area, along with Tom Tumulty, who I think is now the sixth pit player to start his first game ever at the university. Outstanding product out of Penn Hills. Little page out of the pit playbook. Fake the counter trap, come out on the bootleg. Nice safe pass. Thompson does a nice job getting the ball to Deveni. And I'll tell you what, Don Dobes, the offensive coordinator for Temple, is so thrilled about having this guy available to play today. He says he's just a great player and also could be a basketball player for the Temple team if he wanted to play that good. Second down and one at the 20. McNair. Going to be close to the first down. McDonald and Hamilton straightened him up as he got to the line of scrimmage, and he may have leaned across for enough. We'll see where the spot is. First glance, though, Todd, it looks like he's still going to be short. Keith Hamilton did a nice job stuffing that play along with Ricardo McDonald. You know, they're really waiting for Keith Hamilton and Sean Gilbert to play up to their pr pr potential that they were uh, expected to play with. Gilbert was an all-everything player from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, Defensive Player of the Year. Hamilton came in with a lot of accolades. Neither one of them has really played as well as they're capable of playing. And for Gilbert, he just hasn't played very much at all because of injuries. Swanson now becomes the tailback. He gets the pitch. Cabrera, his blocker in front, falls down. He is sliced down by Israel as he gets near the 25-yard line, and that should be enough for the first down. It is. So the Owls do pick up the first down. We invite you to stay with us. Five minutes and five seconds off the clock, and we'll have our halftime, including our Coors Light report of last week's Big East football action. A look at Temple linebacker Santos Stevens, who has a unique off-the-field job and a conversation with the Owls head coach, Jerry Burnt as well as all the stats, the highlights, and scores from around the league. And the Owls will have to spend their second timeout. The Temple is down to one. 
Thompson again Todd seeing something that confused him and he looked to the bench for help. I think Pitt is stemming their defense a little bit. They're moving some people around, and, and Thompson just wants to make sure that he gets the, the right kind of blocking scheme, the blocking call against the defense that Pitt is giving him. And, and this is an important drive. Even if they don't get points out of it, they've got to show that they can move the football against this Pitt defense. They've hurt themselves. They've, they've turned the ball over. They did the same thing against Alabama last week. They've got to put a drive together, go down the field, get into Pittsburgh territory, try to get some points, but at least move the football. You can see the other quarterbacks huddled around as well. Thompson has his instructions, has it set what he wants to do with the ball at the 25, first and 10, 446 remaining in the first half. And Temple down by 17. Pitt taking advantage of three turnovers to score two touchdowns and a field goal. And coming up next week in Big East play on the 21st, our television game, Northwestern at Rutgers, the matchup of the Big Ten and the Big East. Temple is at Clemson. Plus, continues to be a tough road for the Owls. Florida Syracuse should be a good one. West Virginia at Maryland and Virginia Tech to South Carolina. That's the night game. Two tight ends in this formation. Johnson is the lone setback. Garvin and Devenny are both in there. Straight back is Thompson. Looks left, looks left. Pump fake and now has to run. At the line of scrimmage, he dances outside to the 30 and is really stiffened up as he gets to the 33-yard line. Dave Coleman met him head on and straightened him up, but he fell forward to very close to the first down. Coach Burnt likes this kid's personality. He says he's a feisty kid. He's a real competitor. But one thing Thompson can help himself with right here, he makes a decision right away that he's going to run. He, did, he eliminates the possibility of throwing the ball downfield at that time. And then right here, he's got to go down. If he's going to be the starting quarterback and the best punter in the country, he's not going to take too many hits like that throughout a ball game. He picked up 10 yards on the play, gains the first down. The Owls at the 35. Sets, fires, low and incomplete at the 40-yard line. It was intended out there for Washington. Wilbur Washington, junior from Tucson, Arizona. Part of what they call the Cactus Connection. We'll sort that out for you a little bit later. Thompson passing is only three of seven here in the first half. 44 yards, and his team is down by 17. 17-0, 17 4 11 remaining to be played in the half. One thing that's given Thompson some problems is just the, the immense size of Gilbert and Hamilton in there on the defensive front. They're 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and he's having a hard time seeing over this offensive and defensive front to, to make those quick throws. Second down, 10. Play action again, and McDonald is all over it. Third sack of the season for the senior from Patterson, New Jersey. He said at the top of the show, Ricardo McDonald has explosive ability right here. He just beats Conrad Swanson, the fullback. That's a mismatch. McDonald is a big guy, 6'2", 236, has great speed, loves to rush the passer. Pitt is hoping to have an All-American for the sixth straight year, and he might be one of their top candidates. Brother of Devon McDonald, who played so well at Notre Dame. Third and 20, and Thompson will run. But he's got plenty of company led by Doug Whaley, the first one there. Well short of the first down as he has dropped near the 33-yard line. So he got not quite half of what he needed for the first down, and Pitt will get another crack at it with 3.05 remaining in the half. Israel will drop deep. There is the change. Well, from the pit defensive standpoint, they'll let him do that all day. If he wants to scramble up the middle and pick up six, seven yards when they need 20 for a first down, they're going to let him do that. His Tough. first and only punt was 60 yards. He simply drilled it over the head of this young man, Steve Israel, who'd love to get his hands on the football. He hasn't had a chance to do that so far today. Partially blocked. And it trickles across midfield. Bill Davis. Got a piece of it. The ball isn't. Poor Steve Israel can't get his hands on the ball so far. Now the Panthers go deep. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Gels. 
and he was in a pretty good spot to make a catch and go in. He certainly was. That ball was exceptionally well thrown by Van Pelt. You know, I watched them in practice on Thursday. They started their two-minute offense, and the first play in their two-minute offense was to try to go deep. Let's try to get a score right now and nail this thing. What a great job. They've been throwing nitpick across the field a little bit, not going deep. Van Pelt lays this one out there. It's a catchable ball. It's still a little bit of a tough catch. He had a chance at it. Got his hands on it. He was outrunning Ron Bruce on the play. Aaron Denton trailing as well. But they were out of the play. Just missed the connection for the long touchdown. Second and ten at the 38-yard line. Van Pelt drops, sets up the pass to the tight end, Seaman at the 45. But we've got a flag down in the pit backfield. Seaman made the catch and picked up about seven or eight yards, but this one will probably be brought back. So it'll be second down, and they'll back the Panthers up. Still two minutes and seven seconds remaining before halftime. And another Early, reminder, a lot of halftime yes, activity coming up. Team. Penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. We will replay second down. And the enforcement of the penalties from the spot of the foul, Todd, makes a lot of difference in yardage situations. Well, particularly on a penalty like this, offensive holding normally occurs in a passing situation, so the infraction position is going to be behind the line of scrimmage, seven, eight, nine yards. And it just tacks on a lot of extra yardage in situations like that. Right now, it's second and 20. Ball is at the 21-yard line, hit with four penalties, 37 yards. Three wide outs to the ball game, but this is DeVoe on the running play. DeVoe fights his way to the 34-yard line. Aaron Denton made the tackle on him. Let's follow the work against Santos Stevens, the linebacker for Temple. Santo lined up on the end of the line this time instead of his normal inside position. He got double teamed. He ran into Dave Moore, the tight end, and another pit offensive lineman. Dora Jeske out there leading the way as well. Part of a solid veteran defensive front for Pitt. Puts Alex and Pelt in a comfort zone. Pitt now looking at third down and about 14. They're three for six on third down. This is third and long. The pass behind Moore and incomplete. The big tight end reaching out with a right hand could not pull it in. And with a minute and three seconds to go, it'll be a punting situation. Roman Hale applied some pressure that time defensively. So Paul Hackett's team is going to have to kick it away. And Van Pelt has missed his last three passes. Leon will kick it. Shepard deep again. It's fourth down. Shepard's first kick was only 17. He bounced back with a much better kick on his second attempt. You see the average of 32. This is an excellent kick as well. Shepard back inside the 15-yard line, fields it at the 12. Now to the 20. And he spun around and down near the 20-yard line. That's where the Owls will have it. Temple simply outside of the first possession when they got it after the turnover in pit territory. That was a 54-yard kick they have not had much field position. Another McNair still on his feet. Fights outside the 35 near the 38 yard line. A gain of about 18. Doug Whaley who has two interceptions in the ball game made the tackle. So 24 tackled 24 and there are 44 seconds left in the half. Pitt is content to give up a play like this. There are 45 seconds left in the half. They just don't want to give up a long pass for a touchdown or to put him in field goal range. Give him 17 yards on that rushing play. First down 10. Thompson spun down back at the 35-yard line by nose tackle Bart, and a flag follows face mask. Well, despite all the hard work that the Panthers do in trying to avoid penalties, they're going to stack up as many this afternoon as they've had in the first two games. It was an inadvertent face mask on Pitt, but I don't think Fred Von Appen is going to be disappointed because right now this defense is really getting after young Trent Thompson. Right there, Hamilton gets his hand in there. Didn't mean to. Face mask, incidental. Five-yard penalty, repeat, first down. 
the one thing Von Appen wanted his defense to do, he wanted them to really get used to running to the football. He makes them run onto the field in between possessions. He makes them all run to the point of the tackle. And, and they're starting to get used to his system, get used to what he wants. He's got to be happy with what he's seen in the first half today. Final 30 seconds of the opening half. Thompson with some time and a man open and overthrown. Downfield intended for the tight end Calvin Bryant, but he could not come up with it. Bryant Garvin reached up and the ball was too tall, but he had a seam that time. 19 seconds remaining in the half. Plays being signaled in from the sideline. It'll be second down and five. See number two, Tinker Harris. He thought about leaving Pitt. And as many as eight starters or projected starters have left this team since last year. And Tinker changed his mind. He's back and on the field. Thompson stands in for a while. Now he's going to run. At the 50. Down at the 47 in the arms of Williams. Charles Williams, the sophomore from Philadelphia, makes the tackle on Thompson with eight seconds remaining in the half. Thompson able to pick up the first down. Remember, he had only five yards to go following the penalty. So this is first and 10 at the 47, and possibly the last play of the half. Cabrera and McNair, the running backs are split. Dump it short, Cabrera makes the catch. Down he goes at the 35 on what is the final play of the opening half. Second half is underway at Pitt Stadium. Jenkins back pedals, about the same spot, he, about the same spot he's caught some others. And again, he downs it. He wanted to bring that one out, Todd, but didn't have control of the football. Well, Pitt's done a nice job kicking off. They, they've kicked to the same spot every time, deep into that right corner, and it's just deep enough to make that guy think twice about returning it. And even if he does return, he's so close to the sideline that it's difficult to set up a good return. Well, Coach Burnt, true to his word, has stuck with Trent Thompson as his quarterback despite some problems here in the first half. The Owls will have it at their own 20-yard line, and West Virginia leading South Carolina. That's the first quarter score for the Mountaineers. Thompson continues to be the quarterback. Swanson is the lone setback. He has the ball. Trying the left side. They string it out. Whaley is the first one there, followed by Hamilton. So the Panthers all over that play, and they would not allow Swanson to get past the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. The ball is still near the 20-yard line. Swanson, who scored three touchdowns in that Temple victory at Pitt Stadium against Pitt last week. He's from Glendale, Arizona Junior College. Thompson is from Scottsdale, Arizona Junior College. There's the comparison between the quarterbacks, neither with outstanding numbers at intermission. The one that stands out, of course, the two interceptions thrown by Thompson. Second and ten from the 20. McNair is now the setback. Swanson has moved into the slot. It's McNair across the 20. Tom Bunch, the first one there, followed up by Charles Williams. So the Panthers stuff that one after a gain of one. It'll be third down and nine. Coach Paul Hackett's been really happy with the play of Tom Barnett at the nose tap. You know, last year he saw that position get decimated on his defense. He moved Barnett over from the offensive line in the spring, said, I'm not going to let that happen to our defense next year. And really, Charles Williams and Tom Tumulty have been leading the team in tackles, and the reason is they got a nose tackle who can stay in there and take on the blocks, lets those two guys run around and make tackles. So it's just not a bad spot to play in between Hamilton and Gilbert. You've got those guys on the outside of you. Here comes pressure. Thompson drags a leg, gets a Way, looks at the 25. He's got a first down as he dives forward to the 33. Williams made the tackle. McDonald applied the pressure, but Thompson was able to keep his feet, give him that leg, take it away, and grab the first. Interesting, though, Todd, you know, when he does start to scramble, that's all he really thinks about doing for the most part. Right. At this point, he's pretty much made up his mind that when he leaves the pocket, he's going to run. And, and that's okay if you've only got four or five yards to go. This time, he does a nice job eluding McDonald. But right here, now this time, the first time in the second half, he did take a look down the field. But he still is more interested in running the football at that point. From the 34-yard line, it'll be first down for the Temple Owls. McNair is the setback. A rollout pattern. 
and he throws it away. It is incomplete, intended for Jenkins, who was in the area, and McDonald was right in the lap of Thompson. Tom Barnt took a real shot there. He was chasing that play and got hit. A guy coming back into his inside hit him right up under the chin. He never even saw it. McDonald has one sack. He puts the pressure on there. Just a little less than 13 minutes left in the third quarter. The Panthers lead 17 to nothing. Shepard and Jenkins split wide to the right. McNair is the lone setback. A little bit of delay. He has the ball. He fought his way forward to the 35, then was spun back and finally downed by Charles Williams. The ball will be spotted at about the 34. So very little gain, still about 10 yards to go, and now it's third down. The numbers on Scott McNair, brother of KC Chiefs player Todd McNair. You see Devenny. Getting more playing time maybe than we expected, Todd, which is good for Temple, but still offensively they haven't put anything together. Now they want to get him back to full speed. There's no question. He figures to be a big part of their offense. Third down play for Thompson. Fires. The pass is caught by Devenny. He'll be wrestled down, maybe a yard short of the first down by Curtis Bray. The outside linebackers who plays in tandem with Nelson Walker. Devenny. Had the hamstring problems right now. You can see he's still got those problems. Thompson does a nice job. Straight drop back. There's Devenny right in the middle of the field. Little outlet pass. Right there at the end of that play, he must have re-injured that hamstring. And that, that's, that's a bad, bad picture for Jerry Byrne on the Temple sideline. They were yep. counting on him to, to get back soon to, to full strength. Well, just as we make the comment that he's playing more downs than maybe we expected, he's down on the turf at Pitt Stadium. So that is not good for the Temple Owls. He missed all of last week's game. And now Jerry Burns has got a problem. He'll have to go to Michael Brennan or maybe Bryant Garvin to pick it up at the tight end spot. He's looking right now at Thompson trying to figure out what they're going to do. It's fourth and about a yard. Give him nine on that play. Keep in mind that the Owls have really been hit by the injuries. Devaney did not play against Alabama, and the bad news for Temple when they went to Alabama was they lost to Graf, Liberty, and Holland. Basically, for most of the rest of the season, it's going to be tough for Graf to get back until late in the season. So on fourth down, the Temple Owls apparently are going to try to pick it up. Fourth and short. They go to Garvin and Brennan, two tight ends. The running backs are Cabrera and McNair. Temple trying to climb back in it. The lone wide receiver is Jenkins. The flanker split to the left side. Swanson is now the tailback. Swanson with the ball. Swanson, first down. Well, the Temple Isles keep it alive. Garvin led the blocking out to the 46-yard line. First down, a big play for the Owls. Watch Sean Gilbert. He's 305 pounds. He almost grabs the quarterback before the pitch is even made. He has great quickness for his size. They just want him to be able to play more consistently, nursing that toe injury right now. And the one thing, one way they think he might be able to do that, Todd, is to lose a little more weight, get down to maybe the 290 area, 285, something like that. It's a first down at the 47-yard line. Thompson rolling right. Fires and the catch is made at the 30. Spinning away is Shepard. Leslie Shepard picks it up. Coleman missed him. And Shepard able to advance the football down to the 28-yard line of Pitt. A 26-yard pickup. Thompson finds Shepard on the rollout here. Shepard's a guy who was a high school parade All-American, and they've been just waiting. Don Dovis, the, the offensive coordinator, told him we're just waiting for him to reach the, you know, play the way that we think he's capable of playing. They moved him to split end when Graf got hurt. Comes up with a big catch there for the out. He missed much of spring because of a hamstring injury. He and Jenkins are split to the left. This is McNair. There's nothing at all. He's stuffed right in the middle of the line. Jeff Esters, the backup nose tackle from Diana, Florida. If there's a cactus connection for Temple, there could be a Florida flow for Pitt. They bring a lot of players out of the Sunshine State. 
amazing. They can sneak them out of there, and they still got three great football programs collegiately in that state. Seems like just about every good football program has at least two or three kids from, from the Florida area. They're, they've just been turning out so many great, skilled people, particularly in the last couple years. It's unbelievable. Some confusion and a timeout taken. Jenkins was trying to get off the field. They were a little messed up offensively. 10-18 remaining in the third quarter. Pitt Panthers have the lead over the Owls, 17-0. We'll have more after these messages. Because if you don't watch your figure, who will? It's the right feeling now. Because when it comes to water, the only place to start is at the top. It's the right now. Because when the party's going full steam, you don't want to fill up. So reach for the beer that won't slow you down, the Silver Bullet. We exercise, we eat right, <laughs> we even quit smoking. So, hopefully we're gonna live longer, maybe a lot longer. Then one day it hit us. Have we saved enough to live to be 80 or 90 or maybe even 100 years old? The Owls have had the football for the entire third quarter. We have 10-18 to play. This will be the 11th play of the drive. We've talked about the cactus connection. What is it? Well, let's find out. Let's go to Harry. There seems to be an extraordinarily high number of junior college transfers here at Temple playing today. But there's a good reason why. Ron Sismore, who is the assistant head coach and defense coordinator, once used to coach at Arizona State University. He's also the defensive coordinator. And most of the players who are from those junior colleges are defensive players. So Ron knows what kind of players he wants. That is a big time cactus connection as far as Temple is concerned. And Coach Byrne has really rebuilt the Owls. A lot of junior college players. Second down and 10. Sets, drops it to Shepard at the 25. Looking for some help. Gets a block at the 20. Still on his feet at the 18. Dances down at the 17-yard line. Finally, Doug Whaley came up to finish him off and put him down. But it's a Temple first down. This drive, remember, began at their own 20, and they've got it down now to the pit 17. And it's really a different-looking football team right now, John. Jerry Burns said, I think Thompson will settle down this half. I think we'll settle down as an offensive unit. Nice, patient attack. Underneath route to Leslie. And, and he just does a nice job. Waits for one block right there by Jenkins. Jenkins breaks a couple tackles, picks up another first down. Good drive for Temple. From the 17, it is first and 10. McNair to about the 14-yard line in the arms of Lex Perkins. Perkins missing some early action for Pitt, but back in there this afternoon. From San Bernardino Junior College. Ball down at the 14, second down and seven. This is the 13th play of this drive. And Paul Hackett's been watching his defense in the heat and humidity so far the entire third quarter. And you know what, John? As lopsided as this game seems, for the most part, if Temple gets a touchdown here, 17 to seven, it's a brand new football game. The key for them going on fourth down. Quick handoff to Swanson. He'll get a yard, and that's about it. Tom Tumulty from Pittsburgh Penn Hills High School makes the tackle. He is the sixth player in Pitt history to start his first game as a freshman. And to cap that off, thought he's been the leading tackler in the first two games coming into this one. Well, Fred Von Appen said, you know, he's making a lot of mistakes. There's no question about that. But the good thing is he's making them at full speed. He said, we can live with that. I like the way Fred has his players run constantly on and off the field. The theory being run to the football. Shepard and Jenkins split to the right. Swanson is the setback. Mayer is in the slot. Good pressure that time. He threw it away. Jeff Esters was all over him. A flag goes down. Esters was right in the face of Thompson, who hit the deck. I think they're going to call intentional grounding right there. Thompson trying to get rid of the ball to avoid the sack. 
He didn't even have time to look for a receiver. No, there was a little twist game right there. Hamilton and Esters. Esters beat his man Irwin coming around on the right side. No chance to get rid of that Potential football. grounding against the offensive team. Oh, the football yards. comes back. Lost it down. Fourth down. To the 27-yard line. It'll be fourth down. That's the way Pitt has been playing defensively. They're not an overpowering defensive football team. They gave up some yardage in that drive, but when it counted third and five, they turned up the heat and got after Thompson. So they will attempt a field goal. This will be the second field goal attempt of the afternoon for Temple. The spot will come at the 34, make it a 44-yard field goal attempt by Mike Knuth, who's one out of two on the season. Thompson is the holder. This kick is up. Just long enough, but no good. So he has missed two, and the Temple Owls are still not on the scoreboard. A long drive comes up with nothing. So no points for the Owls. Pitt will have the ball with 8.18 to go third quarter. First time they've had it when we come back to Pitt Stadium after these words from our local station. Something's happening that will change the way you think about investing. It's a new CD from Pittsburgh National with a six-month rate that goes only one way. Just keep it rolling along, and the rate is guaranteed to go up every six months for the next three years. The new Super 6 CD from Pittsburgh National. Because having a six-month rate that only goes up is the only way to go. Presenting USDA Choice Certified Haas Beef. Tender, juicy, mouth-watering. When you're really hungry, eat it at Hoss's Steak and Feed. Temple kept the football for 6 minutes and 42 seconds. They drove down the field, but Todd, they didn't score. 17-0 still. You know, a real disheartening blow to the Temple offense right there. They finally put a nice drive together. Trent Thompson settled down, but when you come up empty, it, it actually is for nothing. And you see Big East Heisman Trophy winners from Syracuse. TD, as they called him from Pitt, Doug Flutie and Vinny Testaverde. Pretty good crew. No doubt in the future of Big East football, there will be more. National championships, Pitt is number six. They have not won one since 1976. So it's been a dry spell here at Pitt, something they'd like to do to take care of in the future. 27-yard line, first and 10. Williams with it across the 30. Rolls out to about the 33-yard line. Ron Bruce, number 25 from Mesa, Arizona. Mesa Junior College. And he can just go up and down the list, and almost everybody on the defense is from Arizona. It seems that way. They, you know, they went out there and, and wanted to bring some guys in right away that could play on this football team. And, and it, you know, they made great improvement last year. They were the number one team in, ter in, farms, in terms of turnaround. No, no, no! One in ten season to seven and four. And all four losses were against teams that went to bowl games. Williams across the 35 to the 36. This time it's Kevin Carey from Phoenix, Arizona. There's a good reason to go to Glendale. They won a national championship out there and produced a lot of good junior college athletes. At the 36, about a yard short of the first down. The third and one. Bit content right now to keep it on the ground for the first two plays. Let's see if they change it up a bit. Warriors split wide to the right. In short yardage, three tight ends. The bow is the lone setback. He powers his way to the first down. The ball comes loose. Temple says they've got it. They do. So somehow in the pile, the ball popped loose and a break for Temple. Still a chance to get back in the football game here in the third quarter. Well, Glenn DeVoe is the most reliable back for the pit offense, and he, he rarely fumbles the football. They had the first down easily. Santo Stevens, a big play guy for the Temple Owls, came in and made that tackle, jarred the ball loose. 
going to see if we can see the ball coming loose as the Owls make the hit on DeVoe as he tries to pick up that extra yardage. Just on the hit. You can Steve's see the got his arm in there by Kevin Carey coming in. I think that was the arm that knocked the ball loose. Stevens came up with it. And at the 38, it's first and 10 following the fumble. Second fumble, second turnover by Pitt. The quick pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage, and that continues to be a problem. See what they're doing? When you throw short passes, normally you take a three-step drop. Thompson's just taking a one-step drop. He's just he's just backing right away from the line of scrimmage, and you can't get it up over. The pit defense is well-schooled right now. They see that short drop, they get their hands up. Hamilton with another block. That is his second of the game. Last time he deflected a pass, it was intercepted. This time it drops incomplete. Cabrera now shifts to the right as the backs are split behind Thompson, who's gone all the way at quarterback. A straight drop, and he is drilled as he gets the pass away. Intended for Shepard, it was Hamilton who just knifed him in two as he threw the ball. They think Keith Hamilton here has the ability to be an All-American this year. Last two plays in a row, great job. He just keeps fighting, keeps working, gets in there in time to disrupt that play. And Thompson's got to have more time than that to throw that football. What a bad feeling for Glenn Thinner as he tries to reach out and there's just nothing to do. His, his man is gone. Hits two turnovers have been fumbles. There have been two interceptions and a fumble on the part of Temple. Third down and ten. Thompson with time, and it is picked off. Intercepted by Steve Israel. This one will not be run back in the end zone as it was last week. He stepped in front of the tight end, Brian Garvin. Third interception for Thompson. They had six defensive backs in there as Harris. And Saverio had joined that secondary. Just too many people back there for Thompson. Well, three great defensive plays in a row for Pitt after the turnover. They go play action on third and ten. Pitt's in their nickel situation. He never saw Israel coming up for that interception. Israel continues to be the big player for the Pitt defense. Thompson knows he just lost another golden opportunity after that turnover. Defense has held him in the football game, but the offense has not protected the ball all afternoon. Israel with his third interception of the season. Play action. The Panthers will go deep to Boyer. He's got it at the 20. Chris Boyer between Denton and Glasper reels it in. What a great throw by Van Pelt. Well, and a great call, too, by Paul Hackett. What they did, they get the big turnover. They come right out, play action on first down, and throw the ball deep. They did that earlier in the game. They had a, a touchdown down the left sideline that was dropped. They go back to Boyer on first down for the long play. You take advantage of the emotional swing in the game. Van Pelt lays this ball out there beautifully. Boyer keeps his concentration. Kyle Glasper misread the ball a little bit, slowed down, thought the ball was going to come short. Boyer stayed right with it. He saw that ball all the way into his hands. A 40-yard pickup to the 20. Now three tight ends in this formation. The lone setback, Williams, powers his way straight ahead for a couple of yards. Eric Fenwick made the tackle. He's the first time we've called Eric's name this afternoon. A 40-yard pickup by Boyer, who also has a touchdown in the ball game. Five. 51 remaining third quarter. Williams and Markle are the running backs. They work from the eye. Montcrief and Davis split left. Second and eight from the 18. Pitt leading 17 nothing. Quick pass is caught by Montcrief. 15. He's tripped up and falls to the 13 yard line. Making the shoe straight. The tackle was Crispina. See again, the pit philosophy is, is, is very simple here. Second down and nine, they're going to throw a little quick screen. The ball's only thrown one yard down the field. And the philosophy is, hey, you catch the ball, you make one guy miss, you got one blocker out there in front of you, and we'll get down in there for a short third down conversion attempt. Instead of third and nine, they're looking at third and three. At the 13-yard line, Pitt, you see their conversions. Much better under four, obviously. Van Pelt steps back, guns it, and it's incomplete. Intended again for Boyer, and we've got a flag on the play. It appeared that Crispina might have been draped on Boyer as he made the cut over the middle. That's the same play that he hit Boyer on the touchdown for in the first half, a little quick slant pattern. 
Watch, three-step drop, quick slant back to his left. Pass interference against the defense. First down. That looked like a close call to me. It looked like Crespina was in a pretty good position to make a play on the ball. He's going for the football. Didn't look like a lot of contact. That's a tough call for the Temple defense. But it puts the ball down at the seven-yard line. First and goal for the Pitt Panthers. Leading by 17 and looking to really put some breathing room in this game this afternoon. 4.55 to play third quarter. Three tight ends. Martin is the lone running back. This is Martin. Bounces off one tackler and then is spun down at the six-yard line by Santo Stevens. It'll be second and goal. The ball at the six as Van Pelt comes quickly to the pit bench, which is located just below our broadcast position at Pitt Stadium. I wouldn't Panthers be trying to go 3-0 and this afternoon. I wouldn't be surprised right now to see a similar formation, play action fake by Van Pelt, roll out to the right side, throw into the end zone. Boyer is split to that right side. Martin the lone running back, and Martin has the football. Just inside the five-yard line before he swarmed under by the Owls. Clock continues to roll. Four minutes and five seconds left third quarter. The early part of the third quarter dominated by Temple. They had the ball for most of the time. Pitt then turned it over, but then turned around defensively and got the ball back with their third interception of the afternoon. Now the Panthers will change the formation and bring in two wide receivers and two tight ends. Glenn DeVoe is back as well as a running back. Three wide receivers in this formation. DeVoe is the lone setback on third down. Van Pelt looks, throws, incomplete at about the two-yard line. Daryl Nelson coming up to put the bump on DeVoe out of the backfield. That's incomplete. It'll be third down and goal. it'll be fourth goal coming up. What? Temple had their back against the wall on this play. Van Pelt takes a straight drop back. He's looking in the end zone for the touchdown, then decides, hey, I got to come off to my running back, DeVoe. Nice position right there by Daryl Nelson to break up the play. It'll be a 22-yard field goal attempt. The ball is spotted right in the center of the field. That will help Scott Kaplan. He attempts his second field goal of the afternoon, and he just sneaks it inside. So out of the hold of Chris Humpo, the kick is good, and Pitt adds three more to its lead. Panthers have moved on top of the Temple Owls, leading here 40 to nothing with 323 remaining. We'll be back after these messages. Bob Nickel knows a little French cafe where the food is magnifique, but the bill isn't. Now, where do you suppose he'd rent a car? Budget, where he finds the most luxury Lincolns, over 3,500 locations worldwide, and very tasteful prices. The smart money is on budget. Budget, the official rental car company of the Big East, has special weekday rates on economy through luxury cars. The smart money is on budget. It is now 20 to nothing. The Panthers lead the Owls here in the third quarter at Pitt Stadium, and the trend continues. This time it was the interception by Israel that got the Panthers started on the march that wound up in the field goal. Of course, I know Pitt will be looking back at this game, thinking about the great field position, the opportunities, and a chance to put more touchdowns on the board than they have. Well, they obviously would have liked to score more points with the field position that they have, but, but winning 20 to nothing in this ball game. The opportunity to go 3-0, I don't think they'll be too overly disappointed. Thompson has thrown three interceptions. They have fumbled once. Of course, Temple coming off the 7-4 in 1990. The most improved in collegiate football. Washington is deep, along with 
with Jenkins and Brown this time. Brown is in the middle. We have seen a lot of Shepard on the kick return team, but this time it's Washington. It doesn't matter. They try to kick it to the same spot. This time from the four, it's Jenkins, 10, 15, 20. Skins away from one tackler and goes down near the 25-yard line. That's where the Temple Owls will have it. Vernon Lewis on the kick team made the tackle. It's at the 24. First and 10. Temple will have it for the third time in the third quarter. Georgia Tech leading B.C. 23 to 7. Also in the third quarter. 21-7. Duke has opened it up now over Rutgers in the third quarter. Lucky, 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 and halftime. The Mountaineers leading by three touchdowns over South Carolina. First and 10 at the 24. That's Swanson for a yard and no more. A combination of Esters and Tumulty. You see Tumulty getting up. You know, it's something in a program like Pitt when a guy can walk in and start his very first game. I mean, Ricardo McDonald did it. Dan Marino did it. Tony Dorsett did it. And Tumulty has done it. I mean, it, it's, it's really something at the collegiate level in this day and age to be able to do that. It's a rare thing, particularly with the way they redshirt freshmen so often now in college football. But Tumulty was a great All-American out of Penn Hills High School, the same school that produced Bill Fralick, another guy who came in and started as a freshman. You see Shepard moving to the left, Jenkins to the right. Brown is the deep back. Play action fake to him. Thompson guns it ahead, and it is caught by the tight end. No, he did not catch it. Down on the turf at the 30, it's an incomplete pass. Intended for Bryant Garvin, who's getting most of the duty now. And just think back to when Devenny went out of the ballgame, and it appears that at least for now he's not going to come back. No, he was holding that hamstring. It doesn't look like he's going to be back in the football game. You know, the most frustrating thing for Jerry Burnt right now is that he wanted to work on fundamentals this week. He wanted to get, to get back to basics. And I think they've done a better job than they did last week against Alabama. They've not played bad football. They've just been careless with it. And the turnovers, you're not going to win many games when you turn it over as many times as they have today. Third down and nine. Thompson straight back. Fires in and out of the hands of Leon Brown out of the backfield. So it will be fourth down, and we'll get a chance to see the nation's number one punter coming up. Pitt scoring drive after the interception. Kaplan capping the drive with the field goal, his second of the afternoon, 56 yards, seven plays, three minutes and 19 seconds. We have two minutes and 19 seconds left in the quarter. The shoe change has been completed. Kicked 160 and had one tipped at the line of scrimmage. Steve Israel is deep. Boy, don't you know he'd love to get his hands on the football again. He has one interception this afternoon, but no real real estate for him to work in. He felt coming in that he'd have a good chance to get some returns because of how far Thompson kicks the ball. He has a tendency to outkick his coverage. He should have a good opportunity here. He pulls it down. He's got some room. Thompson running at the 30 to 35. Across the 40 and out of bounds. He has the first down. Moncrief coming on on the play, but Thompson just pulled it down, went 16 yards to pick up the first down. This was not a called play. This was all Thompson. He knew he wasn't going to get that kick off with the big rush coming from his left side. Pulled it down. Now Santos Stevens out in front does a nice job securing that sideline for him. Thompson knows where that first down mark. A big play, but it was a broken play. Now Moncrief broke in basically untouched. But Thompson turned that into a first down. Thompson's now rushed eight times for 57 yards. Fake to Brown, and again it's knocked down. This time Sean Gilbert on the other side batted that ball down. This will give us a chance to go down and check in with Harry. Harry? Whether that was a design play or a broken play, it's plays like that that Temple needs right now to get back into this game. They're only down 20 points. They've still got the fourth quarter to play. With plays like that, it might give them some momentum. Well, Thompson, a six-footer, not able to get it over the outreached arm, outreached arms of Sean Gilbert, who stands 6-6. He has missed six times in a row. Has Thompson, second and 10, at the 42. It is Swanson with it. He's wrestled down by Gilbert, first one there. And if you're a Pitt fan, you have to love seeing Sean Gilbert out of Aliquippa on the field as much as he is. 
One other change that Pitt has made, and we really haven't mentioned, is that Reuben Brown, a highly regarded player out of Virginia, on the defensive side of the ball, has been moved to offense. He missed all of last season, and they think at some point he could become a real factor on that offensive line. Well, they're really pleased with the transition he made. He took the attitude, hey, coach, whatever's best for the football team, I'll do. They had to do some reshuffling in that offensive line. Brown was a key change. Final minute of the third quarter coming up. Thompson gets away from some pressure and will move it straight ahead across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Jeff Esters, the nose tackle. On the stop and 53 seconds now remaining in the third quarter. We talked at the top of the show about Pitt trying to turn up the pressure on Trent Thompson in this first start. They have really done a great job bearing down on him in these definite pass situations. And right now, trailing 20 to nothing, Temple has to put the ball up in the air, and that plays right into the hands of the Pitt defense. The blocking schemes have been set. Thompson had to run the last one. Let's see what happens here. He will get it away, hangs it up for Israel, who backpedals and takes it at the five. And down at the five-yard line. A flag is down as well. 47-yard punt that time by Thompson. Coverage led by Kyle Glasper, one of the defensive backs. We'll check out the flag. The ball is at the five, and Thompson comes to the bench. It's a full day because he's the holder on the field goal team. He's the putter on the punting team and he has been the quarterback so he's been there for every play today well the good news in that play is he didn't have to change his shoe he never Looking got a chance to change it during after the, the fake punt against the receiving team half the distance to the goal first shot the clip will set it back to the two yard line well, let's see what the Panthers can do deep in a hole with only 11 seconds to go in the third quarter and leading by 20. two touchdowns two field goals for Pitt this afternoon Van Pelt coming back on Along with his tight end, Dave Moore. Mike Smackos is in there as well, another of the Pitt tight ends. Williams is the lone setback. They're going to pass. Over the middle, and the ball is caught. It is Seaman at the 15, falling forward to about the 17 for a first down. Tony Schmitz made the tackle, so the Panthers used that three tight end formation and passed out of it that time. They get in a run formation. Everyone's thinking run. Ron Chismar, defensive coordinator for the Owls, he's thinking run. They've got a 20 to nothing lead. They're back in their own territory. What do they do? Fake the toss, sucks the linebackers up. You see, Kevin Carey was responsible for that zone area. He got sucked up on the fake. Seaman falls in right behind him into the open area in the zone. That will end the third quarter at Pitt Stadium this afternoon. The Panthers are leading 20 to nothing over the Owls. We'll be back for the fourth and final quarter after these words from our station. We can't show you the new 1992 Toyota Camry. We have to wait until Tuesday, but we can tell you that the all-new Camry has more power, much more power, more interior room, much, much more room, and it's quiet, very, very quiet. So even though we can't show you the all-new 92 Toyota Camry, we can promise you this, you are going to love what you see Tuesday, the all-new Toyota Camry. One of the best deals going gets even better, Tuesday at your Toyota dealer. Need a plumber? You'll find more ads in the Bella, Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. But what good is a book full of plumbers when you just need one? Who works at night? Who takes credit cards? Who can come right now? Odds are you'll find the best choice in the book that gives you the most choice. The genuine Bella, Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. The Bell Atlantic Company. Say you needed a room for the night where they take credit cards. Pitt Stadium. The Panthers have a 20 to nothing lead over the Owls. They have the ball at the 17 yard line. First down and 10. We have mentioned to Tony Dorsett, outstanding Pitt player. Well, there's another Tony Dorsett. Matter of fact, he is on the team this year. Let's go down to Harry. Well, that's absolutely right. When you say Dorsett, you have to think of Pitt. I think those two names are synonymous. Tony Dorsett, who I've butted heads with quite a few times, he has his son here uh, as a freshman. He may not play today, but he's going to make some highlights in the future. I'm sure Tony is very proud of his son, number 12, a redshirt freshman. 
Here's Williams with the football at the 20. Pushed back at the 23-yard line as Keita Crispina came up to make the first hit on him for Temple. We are beginning the fourth quarter. I'm John Sanders along with Todd Blackledge and Harry Carson. Happy to have all of you with us at Pitt Stadium this afternoon. The Owls have been their own worst enemy this afternoon, Todd. That's the only way you can put it. They have. They've just turned the ball over too many times. They've given Pitt great field position, and you can't do that consistently with a quarterback like Alex Van Pelt. He's a mature kid, and he's going to take what the defense gives you. If that means get in for a touchdown or a field goal, he's going to get it done. Makes very few mistakes. Second down. Williams with some room as he splits the middle and moves close to a first down. Might have it as he gets out around the 28-yard line. A player down for the Owls right now. Jeff Staten is down. Here's our stats through three quarters. You can see first downs. Temple actually has the edge. Total yards. No real difference at all. You have to look at that next to last line and look at the turnovers. Well, really, the only two that make any sense in all of it is the turnovers and the scoreboard. And they're really the only two that count at this point because that's the story of the game. You know, Pitt's offense has not had a, a great day today, but, but, you know, we alluded to it earlier in the broadcast. They suffered a lot of loss this year uh, in the offseason. They lost eight projected starters, and, and really the guys they lost made up a big chunk of the yardage and scoring provided by that offense last year, and, and they're doing it with guys who, who weren't expected to come in and play this year, but they're responding to the challenge. Well, you talk about injuries. We're now looking at maybe two for Temple because that's Jeff Staten. But also Kevin Carey at another part of the field is also down right now. You look at the people that Pitt lost, like Orlando Truitt, who was a starter at wide receiver. Because of injury, Ronald Redman is not back. He was their starter in the backfield. Mike Lavorio, one of the strengths of their offensive line, is not back this year. Uh, Kervin Richards went on to the NFL. They had some players dismissed on the team. Uh, Darnell Dickerson did not return because of academics. It was a very stormy offseason, and I think a lot of credit has to be given to Coach Hackett and his crew and this team because they have now come together maybe a little bit as a result of all of that. Well, he thinks that it really, in the long run, uh, worked well for his football team, particularly his seniors. I mean, I think he said his senior football players at one point in the offseason said, hey, enough is enough. You know, guys are, are not wanting to play, don't want to stick around here. If you don't want to play here, go somewhere else. Get out of here. This is our final season, and we were embarrassed last year, 3-7-1. We're going to try to have a great year for our last year, and if you don't want to be a part of it, then hit the road. And I think that it's drawn that team together uh, from an attitude standpoint uh, better than they could have expected. This is the fifth straight year that the Panthers have opened 2-0, but last year, you'll recall, they opened 2-0, and they had visions of grandeur. They went to Oklahoma and got stomped, and it was all downhill from there. Well, Hackett talked to us about that on Thursday. He said, you know, I think guys were paying too much attention about what was being said about us in the newspaper and in the media, and, and we really weren't that good of a football team. And we thought we were going to go out there and handle the Sooners, and, uh, and, and we got thumped, and, and the season started to go downhill from that point on. While the delay continues, we did talk to Coach Paul Hackett about the off-season distractions, defections, and for about the 1,000th time, he had the answer about how it's affected his team. In August, that uh, it was, hey, you know, let's move on without them. And uh, through camp, I, I felt uh, sort of a, a beginning uh, to come together. And, and of course, we've been fortunate in the first two ball games, and we've been able to continue that. But uh, you know, you know, it, we're only going to tell in terms of how the season goes. I mean, this game is a huge game for us, and uh, you know, we're going to find out if any of that uh, that stuff is going to help us or not. We just got to go. It is 20 to nothing. Paul Hackett's team has the lead, and I told you he used the word huge when describing this game. Now a flag down before the snap of the ball. It's first and 10 at the 28-yard line, and the officials have stopped play. Dead ball foul will go against Pitt. Back him up five. I think obviously more penalties than they would like. And as far as colleges are concerned, the Panthers do something unusual. They started to in spring ball. Well, they did. They started having uh, regular officials come to their practice on a consistent basis. They did it through the spring. They did it all through their summer camp. And, and even now in the season, they do it two days a week on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's a very uh, thing that a lot of pro teams do, but not many college programs. Williams with some room right up the middle to the 30-yard line. Get back most of the five-yard penalty. Chris Sestelli, the center, leading the blocking, along with Lawson Malika, a backup guard on the right side, playing right now for Tony DeLazio. 
Sestilli, the center from Fairview, Ohio, does a nice job standing up Alfonso Taylor. He's a three-year starter, one of the key returners on this offensive line. And he is the biggest player on the field, without question, at least in terms of weight. Williams again with the carry. Brought down by one of the reserve linebackers picking it up was Scott Dennis. Number 45 is in there right now. You know, we talked about some of the losses that Pitt had on their offensive uh, team as far as personnel. And, and one of the key ones was the left tackle, Mike Lavorio, because when, when he was not going to be able to play, they had to take Jeff Christie, who was a starting right guard, and move him to left tackle and then start shuffling a lot of different people around. Uh, that really caused some problems, but so far the offensive line has come together very nicely in three ball games. And Pelt sets, looks, runs away from pressure. The catch is made at the 42-yard line. Leaping up was Junior Green with his first grab of the afternoon. Green from Miami, Florida, got those feet down inbounds. The pressure that time came from Eric Fenwick, but Van Pelt bought enough time to pick up a first down. Great presence of mind by Alex Van Pelt. He feels Fenwick coming, and at this point he says, I'm not going to take a sack. I'm going to throw it out here in a place where either my man can catch it or it goes out of bounds, and we punt the football. Here is the junior wide receiver from Miami. You look at these two teams. Pitt does have, as Tom mentioned, a lot of redshirts. Temple does not redshirt very much. Here's Williams, 17th carry of the afternoon. Nothing there. Scott Dennis, number 45 made the tackle. He's giving Santo Stevens a rest now and then. That inside linebacker spot. A loss of a yard on the play. The second down and 11. So Williams now with 17 carries for 64 yards to lead the rushing. You see Santo. Jazz dish jockey in spare time on the sideline. Great drop by Van Pelt. Great catch downfield by Dave Moore, the veteran tight end who had been leading the team in receptions coming in. He got outside that first down marker and picks it up. Ever since Dave Moore moved to tight end on a full-time basis in the middle of the 89 season, he's become one of Alex Van Pelt's most dependable receivers. You know, he's a big kid, but he also has the ability to get deep. He has the speed to get out in the open and run deeper routes. Good pressure by Swift Birch. Van Pelt knows how long he can stay in that pocket. And as a quarterback, he knows, hey, I'm going to get hit a lot during the football game. But when he sees his man makes that reception for the first down, he forgets the pain in a hurry. A 14-yard pickup. Play fake to Williams. Looking long. That ball is going to be in the air for a long time. Here's the battle, and it's won by Pitt. Jones makes the catch for the touchdown. Dietrich Jones, 46 yards, and the Panthers strike deep. Pelt is waiting to see if this interference call is going to be against the offense or the defense. He doesn't know right now. Gels thinks it was defensive inter interference, thinks he has a touchdown. Again, they go right after him after a big play. They convert on third down, make the first down, and right away they attack deep. A 46-yard strike to the freshman Dietrich Gels from Erie, Pennsylvania. You see the pushing that was going on with Crispina. He did everything he could, and Jell still got the ball. It was a, a well-thrown ball by Van Pelt. One thing, just a, a common rule of thumb on deep balls, you throw Pass the deep ones deep. You don't want to underthrow that play. Defense. We have a touchdown. The penalty will be enforced on the next pickoff. What a drive by Pitt. The drive the offense has been looking for comes here in the fourth quarter. Have to remember, they got the ball at their own two and a half yard line, and they have marched the length of the field. Kaplan for the extra point. It is bobbled. The so Hupko will try to turn it into two, and he won't be able to do it. 
Crispina made the tackle. That is the first career touchdown, obviously, and catch for Jells. 11-11 remaining. Pitt leading 26-0. Back with more after these messages. We didn't look at it like everyone else. That was too confining. Instead, we opened up the Infinity G20 with a luxurious cabin forward design and the exhilaration of a 140 horsepower engine. It's designed to give you breathing room and take your breath away all at the same time. of Pittsburgh, a place to discover. Pitt leading 26-0 with 11 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in this game. Let's look ahead to next week, noon Eastern time, right here on the Big East Television Network. It'll be Northwestern and Rutgers from Rutgers Stadium. So join us for that. Big Ten matched up against the Big East. The penalty will, will be assessed on the kickoff, so Pitt will get the kickoff from midfield. The way it's been going with Don Silvestri, that will probably mean no return, depending on what they decide to do with the ball. It will not be brought out. Once again, down to the end zone. Jenkins has done a lot of that. This was the real drive, the only real drive of the game for the pit offense. They took advantage of the turnovers early, but here they go the length of the field. Well, they really did, and it was a great scoring drive. They did the same thing last week. Different circumstances. In the third quarter, Southern Miss had trimmed the lead to 22 to 14, and the Panthers promptly responded with an 80-yard, 17-play drive that went all the way into the fourth quarter to put that game out of reach. Here, Temple wasn't as close, but they had come up with some big plays. And the Panther offense had struggled a little bit. That was a drive that this team needed. So Thompson comes back out, looking at a 26-0 deficit from just over 11 minutes remaining in the game. Play action. The pass is complete. Out to the 35-yard line, making the grab on the play, number 88. That's Tom Richards, another of the tight ends. We have seen a flock of them. There is one of the tight ends who's down on the play. Bryant Garvin is down. Richards, who's been forced into action, of course, they had been using a combination of Garvin, Brennan, and Deveni, but now Deveni is finished for the afternoon, so wind up making the throw that time to Richards. Moves the ball out for a first down to the 36-yard line. He's a junior. We have a timeout with the player down on the field, 11 minutes remaining in the game. We'll be back after these words from our local stations. Presenting USDA Choice Certified Haas Beef. Tender, juicy, mouth-watering. When you're really hungry, eat it at Hoss's Steak and Feed. We Western Pennsylvanians can be very proud of the advanced medical technology here, but technology accounts for almost 50% of the increase in health care costs. Blue Cross and Blue Shield believe we must balance advanced technology with cost effectiveness. That with careful planning among insurers, providers, business, and government, we can come up with solutions that make the most sense for our community.
Panthers lead Temple 26 to nothing. Looking at this game prior, I think the spread was like 17 and a half points or something. That was how much Pitt was favored. None of us thought it would be that way. No, we really didn't. We thought it would be a close football game. We thought Temple would be able to come out and, and get their running game established and work play action with a new quarterback. But they just turned the ball over too many times and given Pitt too, too good a field position throughout the game. A quick handoff straight ahead by Cabrera. He gets to the 40-yard line before he's dropped by Nelson Walker. Walker and Curtis Bray, the outside linebackers on the same side. Basically, I've talked about the fact that they split the playing time because they didn't have either one of them last year because of knee problems. So this year, they're trying to make sure that they're healthy enough to get a full 60 minutes out of the two. Well, Paul Hackett talked to us about that on Thursday night. He said, neither one of these two players are very happy about it. He said, I'm going to split the time 30 plays and 30 plays for both of them because I don't want to lose either one of them. McNair is now the running back. the football tries to work the left side falls across the 40 out to possibly the 42 yard line not much of a gain there maybe a yard and that's all the clock is moving we're inside 10 minutes remaining in game number three for Pitt game number two for Temple and what a torturous start for the Owls of Temple having to play on the road at Alabama on the road at Pitt and next week to Death Valley against Clemson They'll see a parade of running backs next week, I guarantee you that. And some outstanding defense as well. Third down, about four. Thompson rolls. Here comes some pressure. And they spin him down back at the 32-yard line. McDonald was there leading the way. Putting the pressure on. You know, the Temple coaches told us that our players weren't really ready for the speed of Alabama's team last week. But I'll tell you one thing. Trent Thompson's not going to see too many outside linebackers as fast as Ricardo McDonald when he gets in this position anywhere in the country. And it was Hayes Clark, number 43, that really helped to set it up because he forced him out of that pocket and forced him toward McDonald's side. So McDonald gets his second sack. The shoe has been changed, and Thompson is ready to go. This one hangs up a bit. Israel will come forward, and he's going to kick toward the sidelines and out of bounds. Eight minutes and 28 seconds left in the football game. Pitt is in front, 26 to nothing. Back to the bench for Thompson. Back with more football for us here at Pitt after these messages. The muscles of the neck, back, and legs run in a vertical direction. So Infinity stitched the seats of the Q45 the same way, making it more comfortable and driving less fatiguing. At first, you may not notice the luxury of something as small as a stitch, but to Infinity, what's important is that somewhere down the road, you will. Twenty-six to nothing. Pitt's offense back on the field after their longest march of the day, and Van Pelt will be the quarterback. He's done a good job this afternoon, but that's no surprise to his coach Paul Hackett, who loves having him back for a third year. Van Pelt is 14 of 21 for 207 yards, and he has thrown two more touchdowns. That gives him six on the year. We still have eight and a half minutes basically remaining in the game. The ball is marked ready for play. This time at the 28. Last time Pitt had the ball, it was at the two. Running 
back is Martin. Fights off a tackle or two, stays on his feet as long as he can before he's dragged down. Now let's hear what Coach Paul Hackett has to say about this young man that he has coached now for three straight years. Here's what he says. It's great from a play calling standpoint to know that, that there's total understanding of what we're asking. And uh, one year ago in this stadium against Temple, I think Alex came with parts. He had not thrown three or seven so many balls in his career. And, uh, he came with parts and the Temple got to him. I think personally this is a very important game for him. He has answered the challenge, the handoff, and the spinning run by Martin, the freshman from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Alderdice High School. Picks up short yardage. Bagnano made the tackle. One of the backup linebackers, the guy who normally backs up big James Harris on that side. And Harris is going to check back in to the lineup. Along with Tony Schmitz returning. Pretty comfortable right now for Paul Hackett. 7-20 remaining in the game. And hit leading 26-0. The 20 of those 26 set up by turnovers. Third down and five here. Loose football. The scramble is on and the Owls have it. Jeff Staten drops on the ball after it kicked out of the hands of Curtis Martin. Well, one thing Paul Hackett's not going to be real happy with is just the way that his young running backs have held on to the football. Here, Curtis Martin, it picks up the first down, third and five. He's got a nice run going, just holding the ball a little loosely. He's got to tuck it in a little tighter, and then he can't track it down. Here we see it again. He's, he's got the first down, but watch, that ball's loose in his arm, and a hand just comes in and pops it out. I promise you one thing. If there's one thing that Paul Hackett hates, it's fumbled. For the first time this afternoon, Anthony Richardson, who had a career game against Pitt last year, is on as the quarterback, replacing Thompson. He hands to Brown. Brown was through down the near sideline and out of bounds. Steve Israel forced him out. Brown picking up good yardage as he moves it down to about the 24-yard line. Well. Leon Brown split time as the starter last year with Scott McNair. Brown actually started the first eight games, and then he got hurt. McNair came in and started the last three. They both had about the same amount of yardage, 623 to 573 between the two of them last year. There are his numbers this year. He just had a horrible afternoon, a horrible evening at Alabama. And he's confused here. We'll have to call timeout. We saw that earlier in the ball game. That happened to Thompson a couple of times, and now it's happened to Richardson. The spot of the football is at the 20, so giving 13 yards on the run for the first down. And the senior from Freehold, New Jersey, comes off the bench. Anthony Richardson. They were talking about Anthony, the fact that he probably athletically a little better than Thompson, a little more mobile back there and able to do things. But Thompson provided certain other things in terms of leadership and play selection that they hadn't seen from Richardson. Well, they think Anthony is kind of a low-key guy, his personality, and they thought that they needed a little more of a spark, and they thought Thompson would afford that to their offense. You know, Richardson is a great athlete. He's more of a rollout, scramble-type guy. Had the big game against Pitt last year here in this stadium. Uh, you know, but, but he's only started five games, you know, and the amazing thing is that for only five career starts, Richardson is the ninth-rated uh, highest passer in Temple history for career yardage. You talk about career numbers, career players. They have had a flock of them at the University of Pittsburgh. And they've retired the jerseys of several decent players, wouldn't you say? Yeah, there's some great players in there. I had the opportunity to play against three of them. Dorsett was a little bit before my time. You saw enough of those other folks. Here's Brown. 15. He's got a first down as he fights his way inside the 10-yard line. The blocking led by Dennis McCabe, the center, and Brian Irwin, the right guard, as they got out in front of Leon Brown. Well, some people out there might be thinking, why couldn't Temple do this all game? You know, why are they running so well right now? Well, one part of that is the fact that Sean Gilbert and Keith Hamilton are no longer in the football game. They, they Pitt has put some reserve defensive linemen into the football game. I think Hamilton has just come back in. Pitt doesn't want him to get in the end zone. Any defense would love the shutout. Confusion in the backfield, and down goes Brown. Not a bad hit by Richardson as he knocked down his tailback. Well, he's a great athlete. He can do it all. 
I'm sure he didn't get as many snaps this week as Trent Thompson did. You know, they, they don't they aren't down on Anthony Richardson as a quarterback. They just felt that in the Alabama game, he made some poor decisions and they thought that Trent would be able to, to handle the offense a little better this week. They no. awarded the job to him on a one week basis and it wasn't a permanent thing from the very beginning. Well, they have tried, according to what they have said, through camp and everything, to give them an equal amount of snaps, at least as much as possible. But you're right, I'm sure they had to give Thompson some extra work this week. The loss of four, back to the 12. Richardson's pass toward the end zone incomplete. Intended for Shepard, but he was leaping up with Perkins and could not come down with the ball. 26 to nothing. Pitt leads with 543 left in the game. So from the 12, it'll be fourth down and goal. Temple Isles, no choice here, but to try to figure out a way to put six on the board. Give them any chance of getting back in the football game. They'll go for it on fourth down. Excuse me, it's third down. Not fourth yet, third. Still at the 12. Audibles from Richardson. And a straight drop. Pump fake, and now he'll run away from pressure. At the 10, he takes a lick at the 8 from Perkins. Lex Perkins put his shoulder down and drove him out of bounds. I think Anthony thought he had the corner turned on that one. Lex Perkins, redshirt junior from Highland, California, came from out of nowhere, and I, I think he's just happy to be on the field this week. Perkins had to sit out a game last week. You see he slipped through the block by the wide receiver. Good lick on Anthony Richardson. And we have a pit player down in the end zone. It's a guy who's been very valuable to the Panthers this afternoon. Doug Whaley is down, and they'll work on his left ankle or left leg. He had the two interceptions that helped set up some scoring for the Panthers earlier in the ball game. Two of the pit touchdowns, two of their field goals, set up directly by the turnovers by Thompson and company. And Pitt's going to try to be as stingy as they possibly can because Sean Gilbert and Jeff Esters have just returned to the field. They don't want him to score here. Defensive teams and defensive coaches love the shutout. I mean, it's just a, a great confidence and morale boost. They've played good defense. They've not played dominating defense. They've been very opportunistic in the first two games. Today, with a shutout, uh, they could ring that up as a very dominating type performance. Hamilton has come out and Bart has come out and Whaley upright and walking returns to the bench. The ball is near the nine yard line and it is fourth down. The officials say hold it. We're not quite ready to go. You know the last touchdown that Pitt scored the catch by Dietrich Gels. Interesting thing that happened. Gels is the one who dropped the touchdown pass down the left sideline early in the game. They showed their confidence in him. They went back to him deep in the next quarter. And you know, the same thing happened last week against Southern Miss. Chris Boyer dropped a sure touchdown on a third and one, a great play fake by Van Pelt, threw the ball down the middle of the field. He dropped the pass. Five plays later, they went back to him for a touchdown. They're gaining more and more confidence with their young receivers. And while we figure out if the clock is right or wrong, and there's nothing on the scoreboard at the present time, we're going to run down what lies ahead because a lot of this season is yet to be played. We have just begun, and the scoreboard clock has gone out for Pitt. Minnesota, Maryland at Notre Dame. A lot of people here thinking, hey, maybe we could go into the Notre Dame game 5-0. I don't want to count your chickens too soon. That might not be possible, but a good start for the Panthers nonetheless. And you can see the rest of the schedule down the line. And from the Big East, Syracuse, Boston College, Rutgers included in there. And at the end is Penn State as that great series winds down. What about the Owls? What a torturous way to start with all the road games, Todd. Well, Clemson, Death Valley is a difficult place to play. And anytime you have to open your first three games on the road against tough opponents, uh, you're hoping not only to just survive and maybe win one out of those three games, but also you don't want to get beat up physically. And unfortunately, uh, both things seem to be happening to Temple on the negative end of it right now. They are going to keep the official time on the field. 
you see the rest of the road schedule, it's not any easier because they've got to go to the Carrier Dome and they also have to go to Mountaineer Field. Those are two places that are not real kind to visiting teams. So the scoreboard is out. We do know that Pitt is leading 26 zip. You know, Paul Hackett made an interesting observation to us yesterday. He said, you know, it used to be our team used to look at that schedule and we'd focus on the Notre Dame game, the we'd focus on the Penn on the State field. game and the Miami game. He says, now with the formation of the Big East Conference, he says, we're looking at those games. We're looking now, our next biggest game is Syracuse. Now, certainly we can't overlook Minnesota and Maryland, but our next biggest game is our next Big East game against Syracuse. Certainly, the addition of the Big East Conference and the chance to play for a championship and the way the bowl situation has come together has added something special for all of the Big East Conference teams. The ball is at the nine yard line and it is fourth down. Pitt trying to hold them off and protect the 26 nothing lead. I look for Richardson to roll out to his left here, try to make something happen, either throwing or running the ball. You're right on target. He throws the football toward the end zone. It is caught. The touchdown to Leslie Shepard. Shepard just in the corner of the end zone, and the Owls break the ice and get on the board late in the ballgame. Well, Anthony Richardson proving that he hasn't lost his magic touch against Pitt. But I here think in he hurt stadium. himself. I think he did too. He may have hit his thumb or his hand on a helmet after he threw the football. And that can be a very painful thing. I did that in a game back in 1985. Had to get surgery on my thumb after the season. Leslie Shepard working one on one. He's, he's working a fade pattern. Richardson underthrows the ball. And Shepard does a nice job coming back to the football. He beat Stephen Israel on that play. The ball was a little underthrown. Shepard did a nice job adjusting to the football. Mike Knuth for the extra point. First one he's had a chance out. This is the first touchdown of the year for Temple. They scored only three at Alabama. They have seven here this afternoon. 26 to seven. It is on top in game number three, their second home game. And let's take one more look. Here you go. Richardson's going to take a quick roll to his left. He's a little late throwing the ball. Shepard was thinking that ball was going to come over his inside shoulder. The ball was underthrown and outside, but Shepard, again, great adjustment to the football. And as you said, Stephen Israel somehow got hung up there and wound up leaning back the wrong way. Let's go down for an update sideline wise from Harry Carson. Harry? send out the search crew see where Harry is right now. He's down there on the sidelines. We'll find him. The Pitt Panthers leading 26 to 7. Not exactly sure how much time is left because the clock has gone out. 530. They do have a score up now on the scoreboard, but they do not have a clock posted there, and it's being kept by the official clock operator down below. I'm sure Jerry Byrne hopes that they never turn that clock back on, hopes they can keep playing all afternoon to try to get back in this football game. Dave McLaughlin will kick off. Israel is deep for Pitt. The Panthers really not expecting him to kick it that far. They've got the hands team up, but he kicks it deep. Spins it out of bounds. So it'll be spotted at the 35 yard line as we had on the opening kickoff. McLaughlin has not gotten one into play so far, but I guess with a guy like Israel back there, that's not all bad news. Well, they're showing him great respect, and that was. Kicker. The penalty will be enforced on the 35 yard line. So at the 35, first down 10, Van Pelt continues to be the quarterback. As you look at the Cathedral of Learning on the campus, here's the scoring drive for Temple. Six plays, 33 yards, a minute and 32 seconds. Richardson to Shepard, and I haven't really gotten a good look at Richardson to see what his situation is after apparently injuring his hand after throwing the pass. He looked very upset coming off the field. Williams with 64 yards on 17 carries, adds to that total as he works his way out to about the 38. Alfonso Taylor, number 74 from Trenton, New Jersey. He's had a birthday last Saturday. That was not a fun party for him, was it? Not at Alabama. Gain of four on the play. It'll be second down and six. Pitt would love to run out the clock. We'd love to tell you exactly what it is, but we don't know for sure. 
you know, Alfonso, Alfonso Taylor has really found his niche at Temple there at nose tackle. He, he's exceptionally quick for his size. I just wonder whether he has the stamina to play a full 60 minutes carrying as much weight as he does. Out to about the 43 is Williams. Roman Hale from Westchester, Pennsylvania made the tackle. You made an interesting observation about Temple liking to come to Pitt. This is the second straight year they've played here, and the fact that their players like to play against the University of Pittsburgh. They really do. They see themselves as similar type of football teams. They both like to play a physical style of game, and the kids are similar in a lot of ways. They're both city schools. A lot of the kids are used to the same environment. They know a lot of one another uh, on the various teams, and, and this is a game that Temple historically really gets up to play. I need to correct that. It's actually third down and two. Lance Markle, the fullback wiped out by the center of the line but not before he gets the first down at the 45 yard line so Pitt will keep the clock rolling keep the time moving that time is being kept down on the field it's 26 to 7 the Panthers on top of the Owls here at Pitt Stadium we invite you to stay with us after the game because we will be having a post game show wrapping this all up and talk to some of the key players and coaches from this afternoon's ball game Take a look ahead at what is to come as far as Big East football is concerned down the road. From their own 45 yard line. Williams again. He's got about two or three more. Williams has now carried the football 20 times for 74 yards. Scott Dennis. Another junior college player made the tackle along with Greg Angeli. And Angeli leaves the field. He's been the workhorse with the football this afternoon, as Jermaine Williams. His nickname is Jay Nice. When we spoke to Paul Hackett this week, he, he tried to play down the fact that, that they were 2-0 last year and then things started to go bad. How important was this game, where it landed on the schedule? But I think he's going to breathe a big sigh of relief. Now they're going to be 3-0, it looks like, and, and played a very good football game today against Temple. The fullback, Markle, across midfield and into Temple territory near the 48-yard line. Panthers leading 26-7, and they can continue to wind that clock down. Again, Scott Dennis made the tackle. On the other side of the ball, I think that that Jerry Burnt and defensive coordinator Ron Chismar have to be happy, at least with the fact that there was no quit in his defense. They gave up a couple big plays, but really their offense with the turnovers put them in such a difficult position throughout the game uh, that they really had their backs against the wall most of the afternoon. It is third down and three. It has the ball in Temple territory near the 47-yard line. Williams and Markle, the running back. This is Williams. He'll work outside and be spun down before he can get to the first down marker. Jeff Staten stayed with him. He tried to move outside, and he was cut down short of a first down. So Pitt will have to turn the football back to the Owls of Temple. At the 46-yard line, Tony Schmitz drops deep. Our scholar athlete from Temple, junior college transfer, who, scored, who intercepted two passes against Pitt last year. He came out of junior college as well, but this junior college in Kansas, great city, Independence, Kansas. Somebody you know from there? I know a few people from there, yeah. Dead ball, delay of the game. Delay of the, the game. Offense. The clock will start on the snap. Clock will start on the snap. That clock is being kept the downstairs after the scoreboard went out. Now that actually is my hometown area. When I was there, they were better known for basketball. Won a couple of junior college basketball championships, but uh, they produced some football players as well, obviously. And good students. Everybody coming out of there, great students. Virginia. All right, let's try it again. Mitch is standing at his 10-yard line. Leon squibbed one early, but since then has come down back to do a pretty good job. Drives this one to about the 10. 
hit, starts left, and is drilled. And that's Leslie Shepard, not Smith. A 36-yard punt. Shepard coming on to take that kick. Dropped at the 15-yard line. Let's see who's going to come out as the quarterback. And Richardson is coming on. So apparently he is all right. We told you at the beginning of the game that we would be naming our player of the game. And we're going to do that shortly. It's at the 15-yard line. Richardson. Went back to pass and rolls away from pressure across the 15 near the 18-yard line. Mike Kelly out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 65, the last man up for Pitt. The Panther fans beginning to celebrate a bit. It looks like Pitt is going to go 3-0. and oh. Richardson firing on the move. Pass complete. Knocked out of bounds. Raphael Mack made the catch and was rolled out of bounds. You have to hand it to the pit defense and our infinity player of the game this afternoon. He deflected a couple and really the defense set the stage for what happened here this afternoon. He's our player of the game, Todd. He played a great game. You know, he, he came through last week, played the way they were hoping that he would play with that All-American potential, and he did things today that don't even show up on statistics. You can count the deflections, but you can't count the quarterback hurries and pressures, and he was in uh, Thompson's face most of the day. Here's Richardson. Way tall, overthrown, incomplete, intended for Tom Richards, the tight end number 88, but it was over his head from Richardson. The Pitt Panthers are set to go 3-0. and Looking ahead to Minnesota. They'll play on the road the next in two weeks. They're also looking forward to that bye the week off. Well, they really are. You know, Paul Hackett told us that with the 20-hour restriction on practice and meeting times, it really affects the younger players, and the bye weeks are going to be very valuable to get the young guys caught up offensively and defensively. Another one that's too tall, this one intended for Wilbur Washington. Off his fingertips, it'll be third down. Still at the 26-yard line, third down and 10. Some of the folks are heading home at Pitt Stadium. Like us, they're not exactly sure how much time is left. We have not been able to hear the officials' calls, but not much before this one will be over. 26 to 7, the Panthers have the lead. Their first 20 points is set over, set up directly by Temple turnovers. This is Mack. Raphael Mack close to a first down. Depends on the spot. Keith Snell, a redshirt junior from New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, made the tackle. Snell had done quite a bit of starting last year at linebacker because of the injuries to Nelson Walker and Curtis Bray. And we will measure. seems to me, Todd, like this fourth quarter has lasted an eternity, you know? <laughs> well, when you're trying to play catch-up and you're throwing the ball a lot, uh, Pitt has, has been content to run the football. And, and even on defense, they're content to let them complete some short stuff. They just don't want to get beat deep, keep everything in front of them, come up, keep them in bounds, and keep the clock running. The ball spotted out at the 36, but it is just a little shy of the first down. They need a few inches to keep the drive going. It's fourth down, and they'll go for it. They are three for three on fourth down plays, including one for a touchdown. Leaning is Sidney Morse, and he does pick up the first down. We remind you again that the clock is not working. It's being kept on the sideline, and we've not been updated to exactly how much time is left, but there can't be more than a couple of minutes left in the ballgame. It's 26-7. Pitt has the lead. If you can figure out how much time is left by looking at that. Now they tell us that we're inside the final minute of play. The pass out to midfield. 
Wilbur Washington could not hang on to it. So Temple will come back and look at second down and 10. The game is pretty much out of reach, but this is still a good opportunity for improvement for Anthony Richardson. He had a poor game against Alabama, three for 17. He's thrown the ball pretty well in, in the substitute role coming in for Thompson. I think you could see in the way Thompson kicked, especially the last time that he tried to kick, I think it did have an effect on his kicking. That one's up for grabs and incomplete. Knocked away by Chris Hupko, who's also the holder on the Pitt Panther kick team, intended for Washington downfield. He Todd didn't seem to me, as we have a flag down, didn't seem to me to have the same leg he had early in the ballgame. No, I'm sure he was just fatigued. You know, that, that takes a lot out of you. He did, not only did he play quarterback, for most of the of the game. He also did a lot of running from that position. He pulled it down and did a lot of running on his own. He faked a punt, and that's just gonna wear you down a little bit through the course of a game, uh, particularly when it's as hot as it is here in Pittsburgh. And I guess the decision will be made by Coach Burnt and the staff during the course of the week. But one has to wonder exactly what he does now after these two losses and going to Clemson. The first decision he has to make is a quarterback, obviously. Well, he is going to have to make that decision again this week, and I think he'll probably take the same approach. Hey, we're playing the number one, number eighth ranked team in the country next week down in Clemson. We've just got to execute fundamentals, and we've got to protect the football. If we turn the ball over, we're not going to win many football games. Final 15 seconds, we are told. As soon as the wide receivers decide exactly where they're going to go, we'll get the play underway. Tough time deciding where to line up. Ripping it right up the middle is Matt. He's out to the 45-yard line. Vernon Lewis from Houston, Texas, makes the tackle. And that, we are told, is the end of the ball game. That is the final play. 26-7 is the final score. The Pitt Panthers are 3-0. The Temple Owls are 0-2. We'll be back to wrap things up after these words from our local station. What would you do if someone took away your yellow pages? My yellow pages? The Bella Pennsylvania yellow pages. <laughs> you and what are me? <laughs> no, 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 no. People want to hold on to the book with more choices. Hey, no, no. My yellow pages don't even think about it. It's the book nine out of ten use, and when asked to choose, most people won't let go. The genuine Bella Pennsylvania yellow pages. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic company. My glasses seem to hate me, and I've got the marks to prove it. Why put up with glasses that just don't fit? Lens Crafters brings you better fit, greater comfort. Lens Crafters glasses fit your snug points with snug fit temples, snug fit flex pads, and snug fit flex hinges. Why put up with glasses that just don't fit? I never knew glasses could be this comfortable. Lens Crafters, better fit, greater comfort in about an hour. News for people, weeknights at 5.30 on WTAE-TV. The final score, 26-7. to 7. The Pitt Panthers go to 3-0. and 0. The Temple Owls have lost their second straight. Todd, you look at what happened to Temple today. It's what they could not afford to let happen. They just turned it over too many times. Right. They, they really did some good things. They were able to come out and get their running game going early, did some nice things on the play-action pass, but you can't turn the ball over and give it to a quarterback like Alex Van Pelt. That is it for this portion of our telecast. We remind you, join us again next week live here on the Big East Television Network. It'll be Northwestern at Rutgers, and we will start at 12 noon. We also invite you now to stay tuned next for our post-game show coming up after these words from our local stations. People around Pittsburgh are special. Old friends stay together, and families still get together. We draw strength from what we have in common but we love to celebrate our differences. For over 30 years, Channel 4 has been right there beside you, telling it to you straight, like you'd hear it from a friend. Maybe the reason more Pittsburgh people like WTAE 4 News is that we're more like Pittsburgh people. It's Saturday morning at Perry Traditional Academy. Two dozen students have given up sleeping in for a chance to brighten their future. Helping them are 10 volunteers from Mellon Bank. The track record of these corporate tutors has been so good, 
that there's now a student waiting list. And the Mellon Perry Partnership is only one of dozens of similar alliances around the city. Partnership in Education, sponsored by the Allegheny Conference on Community Development, the Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce, and the Pittsburgh Board of Education. News for People, weeknights at 5.30 on WTAE-TV. Welcome back to our Big East post-game show. Pitt Panthers winning their third straight, defeating Temple here this afternoon, 26 to seven. The first 20 points set up by turnovers and certainly a strong game defensively for the Pitt Panthers this afternoon. As a matter of fact, our Infinity Player of the Game is standing by down below. His name is Keith Hamilton, and he's with Harry Carson. Harry? That's right, guys. We've got Keith Hamilton here. Keith, you guys came out and had a great game today against the Temple Owls. How much of an influence was the game last year uh, going into this game today? Well, it was a big influence. We came out and uh, the defense took it upon themselves. Coach Van Oppen has been getting us ready all week. And um, it was a big game for us emotionally as well as physically. Um, Temple has a great team. They have a great offensive line and they have a couple good backs. And um, we just carried out the plan that Coach Van Oppen gave us. Does this team feel a sense of redemption now that they beat uh, Temple 26 or 27 to 7? Uh, it's not a sense of redemption. Uh, we don't get up for any more ga one game more than we do the other. We take one game at a time. Uh, the co coaches do a wonderful job of praying us each week, and we try to carry out the plan that they give us. This is a great patch on your shoulder. It says, in memory of my father, Willie L. Hamilton. Right. That's my father. He died of a stroke uh, two years ago. It's a very emotional time for me, and I'm just trying to, to come together and prove a lot of doubters wrong this year about you know my intensity, um, 